I ghost people if you gave me like straight up weirdo creep you did too much too soon vibes you just not gonna hear from me again mm -hmm. if I met you three times and you didn't hear from me again ever it's probably because our energies don't clash and you're just not close enough to me to have an explanation you don't deserve mm -hmm. my goodbye Welcome back to the Treehouse Show. You just listened to my hit single, Nighttime, which is coming out in next month. Yes, I'm big. Eee, okay. I'm your host, Dartasia, and you are tapped into the chillest podcast in the universe. Today, 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 we gonna get straight to it. Sorry, I'm not gonna talk much because we got shit to do. But before we do that, we gonna drop some genesis, you feel me? Mm. Um, oh snap, is that T? T, talking to me. That's me. What's up, Electro Company? What's good? What's good? Yo, I saw you send me a message. I know that's an event. I'm gonna check that shit out, my boy, I promise. Uh, but yeah, before we get started, could everyone take the time to do a little round table, introduce yourself, where you're from, what you Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Starting with me. What's up, everyone? My name is Sherry Soul. I am a singer, multi artist in Chicago. I rap. Uh, a lot of y'all that know me know I like to make jewelry and pretty much connect to the people in the land. You know, I'm here for those purposes, you know, just to connect and get out here and meet beautiful people like the ones that are here right now at the Treehouse Show. So I'm grateful. To be here, you know, I'm dealing with little vocal woes, but you know, I would get through it. Mm. And uh, yeah, I've been singing for like over 20 years. Not trying to give away my age, but I don't mind. <laughs> uh, with all that said, y'all, you know, Chicago's been treating me very well, despite the uh, the reputation of people not supporting. So we're grateful for anybody that's supporting this platform, and Thank we hope you. that you mm. continue to follow us. You know, much love. Mm. Yeah, yeah. As you should. Um, my name is Dez. I am from pretty much everywhere, but uh, <laughs> yeah. I guess like the south suburbs of Chicago. Harvey. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like Delta and Harvey. How you know Harvey? Oh, okay. Okay. Hey. Um, I do music. I do photography. I've been dibbling and dabbling and modeling lately. As a lady, I'm just trying to learn and expand, grow my art. You know, just be more with my people, grow my business as well. Um, I'm gonna plug my people real quick. Pandora Studios, if you don't know who that is, that is my people. They are amazing. They have their own music, so check them out. They're amazing. But yeah, that's really that's all for me. Yeah, I had to plug, I had to plug Pandora in real quick. I had to plug Pandora in. Period. Yeah. I'm Christina Baca, but most people call me Baca. I'm 24, first generation Mexican. Um, I moved to Chicago four years ago to become a dancer and a choreographer. And I've been doing that for the last four years. And in the last two years, um, I started creative producing, so throwing shows, um, directing. I also co-owned a dance studio, a photography studio, and music studio for two years. Um, so definitely big on marketing and business. And that's what I'm super, super passionate outside about, outside creation. And I just genuinely enjoy meeting people and bringing people together. Mm -hmm. yeah. As you should. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm Liz. Hey, Liz. Um, formerly known as ET. Okay. Mm -hmm. I am a published author, radio host, and currently okay. on TV seven nights a week. Okay. Um, I am a professional nerd. I love everything video games, comic book, and anime. I own my own anime company, Merch. own That's anime cool. studio called Pop Ronin, where we create black and brown representation in the anime and nerd community. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. I host my TV show, The Nerdium, which comes on Channel 19, uh, but comes on every single day. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty much to highlight the creativity, nerds, anime freaks, alternative black and brown culture that doesn't get the spotlight that it deserves. Mm -hmm. So if you would like to hear alt music created by black women, black men, Hispanic men, Middle East, anybody that fits into what you see as yourself actually put as a superhero, that is what I do. That's beautiful. So, that's so awesome. Awesome. Love oh, that. Oh, Super unexpected. Unexpected intro. I love that. Yeah, like, y'all all got intros. <laughs> the pressure's on. The pressure is on. Only because I'm never in the hot seat to be. It's just my She'd be hot. I think I have pressure. I'll be on the other end where he is. So it, it's new for me. Um, I'm Samaria Elizabeth. I guess I will say I'm a media personality first. If you know me in the city, I probably interviewed you before. Um, if you do music, anything creative. Um, 
I write books. Um, I haven't gotten them published. That's a work in progress. Um, but I've done a lot of writing here and there throughout the city, just a little bit. And um, what else do I do? I consider myself a creative consultant. Um, I help a lot of people with projects, putting like the little finishing touches, like little juju, the little magic, mm. you know, make it pop <laughs> each year. Um, mm. So I have a lot of like a big creative mind. Um, so I help with that. And what else do I do? My interests, um, I feel like as of late, the last couple of years, I've been more on a spiritual journey. Um, so it's been more like introspective. So if you look at my Instagram, it probably doesn't reflect the things I make first, which mm -hmm. is the media personality, the writer, the creative consultant. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's been a more of a coming back to self, rebranding. So if you know me, you probably know me for a little bit of all those things. So yeah, what you see is what you get. Um, Depends on the day, though. <laughs> sure. yeah. That's the best I can say. Yeah. She's just that beautiful spirit. Like, yeah. Hey. Spirit spirit like, yeah. Yeah. And I, I relate <laughs> to that. Yeah. You are hilarious. I relate to that. Maybe mm. I'm over here in my spirit. I relate. And I'm disconnected a little, you know? But yeah. You, you got to disconnect to reconnect. That's yes. Yes. That's really yeah. what it yes, was. Because I started with being a media personality. And um, if we want to segue, we can with this. Um, But basically, talking so much. I felt mm -hmm. like I started with writing though before I started talking, but in a sense of like branding myself, I said I'm a media personality first. Mm -hmm. So what it did, I'm just talking, 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 hundreds of people all the time. Cameras in front of you, bikes in front of you, stages, like. So you comfortable. Yeah, mm -hmm. at that point, it seemed like it, but if I want to talk about my true nature, I was shy as a kid. Mm -hmm. I didn't start talking over myself when I was 14. So it's like, I was writing, I was really inside of myself. Like I mm -hmm. used to, really see the world in a different way and then once i started to engage i felt like i disconnected more from myself mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. i took time away from the like creative scene like being on stages on the mics and um, really started to center myself a little more and then i realized like that's where the writing comes that's where my best self comes when i'm one like mm -hmm. and really trying to merge all parts of me so that's mm -hmm. really been my re-emergence it's like i've always been spiritual a little bit a little woo there always been a little writing, always been a talkative person if you really know me, and then I've also became extroverted and like showing the world that. But now I'm trying to show the world everything. So yeah. It's yeah. that. Really cheers. Yeah. cheers. So that's me. <laughs> a little social distance cheers. Mm -hmm. Social yeah. distance cheer, yeah. cheers, <laughs> cheer, cheers, cheers, cheers. Six feet apart. <laughs> Six. Yeah. Six feet apart. I had to. It's, you know, sometimes we got to reflect to project into True. the future, True. the future we want. Oh, True. I'm winging it. Yeah. So, <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen, listen. Timmy, you got a lot of fans. I do. Mm. Like people saying, Timmy, you're not even alive, right? I, I'm in it, but oh, it's just okay. the comments. Okay. Like, I'm one of y'all, like, an audience in the Actually, comments. Well, they, 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 they show love. So hey. we're going to do something different Thank today. You. Okay. We're going to do something different. Mm. Usually, I start with a topic or something. Right? Mm -hmm. A lot of y'all are like, Dartasia, what's the topic? <laughs> <laughs> tell me. What are we going to talk about? I, 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 about. I trust you. You know what I'm saying? I just said I trust you. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. You came in with the trust. Listen. Like. So, so guess what? I'm going to switch it up. I'm, what I'm going to do today is a lot of you all asked to be on the show. Right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to let you all. What do y'all want to talk about? Mm. It could get deep up here. You got a lot of women over here. I do. Yeah. yeah. I do. But I'm giving the floor. What's, what, what do y'all want to talk about? I'm down for whatever. I'm down to talk about rediscovering. I'm down to talk about toxic spirituality. Yeah. I'm down to talk about sexuality. Ooh, I'm down to, to talk about... Um, what was a quote I wrote down today that I was like, this would be a nice thing to do? I'll take one to think. Yeah, what is this? Oh, you and this? Okay, this oh, is this fire. Is brain juice. It's so it's brain fire. Juice. What is that? I just made that That sounded great. Okay. Look, look. American Psycho. I'm so fake gullible, y'all. I really was like, ooh, brain juice. Brain juice, I'll take it. Wait, what is it? I need it. Is it going to give me powers? Like, if you know, I hadn't um, already tried really it, I'd probably be right there with you. Well, um, it's really I'm watching the, um... Oh, I'm sorry. The Jeffrey Dahmer Netflix show. Ooh. A little too little close to home. Everybody has some. You know... That show was um, it was something else. You I watched know. it. I watched it a little bit. Okay. I couldn't watch it all. I, I watched, watched it all. Every, I binged it. <laughs> okay. I watched it all because I learned about. Oh, it. okay. Since it came, okay, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna bring this up. I'm gonna bring this up. Okay. So it's actually kind of me. I'm glad this is random. It's popped up. Mm -hmm. I have not watched like you or Jeffrey Dahmer mm -hmm. or like there was a Bundy series. Or mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So actually, something that's interesting to me is like. Who is the audience of these shows, right? Mm -hmm. So I look into the audience. It's a lot of women. 
mm-hmm. like young women. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's like these guys, well, not Jeffrey Dahmer, he was gay. But, mm-hmm. and his audience is probably different, but Latin Bundy <laughs> and the blah, 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 they, most of their victims were women. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you too, I don't know, but I hear it's like a stalkery show. Yep. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But a lot of women watch it. <sighs> Again, it's mm-hmm. fiction. Mm-hmm. I get that. Mm-hmm. But, and then also, some people be saying shit, but they're not really about it. So I know people in the comments think it's cute to be like, oh, I stand Jeffrey Dahmer. Oh, <laughs> Ted Bundy sleeping oh, with me. But it's like, I don't know if this is, is it true? Like, no. are y'all just saying that because it's cool? Mm-hmm. Or like, mm-hmm. or I'm not saying you all, but is there an appeal to like these serial killers? Hell to women? No. Like, why? So, the, um, what, where's this? Like, check it out, check it out. What do you think about these serial okay. killers? So when mm-hmm. Jeffrey Dahmer got caught up this, knowledge from the documentary. Mm-hmm. So when Jeffrey Dahmer got put into jail, he actually became a superstar. So people were sending him letters, money, clothes, like while, all, he, was while Na- he was alive in jail. Pictures. Because a lot of them were um, obviously white people because in their eyes, they thought he was doing like God's work by yeah, killing, kill black men. killing yeah. gay black, gay black men. men yeah. Yeah. So in a lot of people's eyes, it was like this, like, oh my God, you were doing God's work. And he became a superhero right. in the jails. And I think that's what a lot of people idolize is just like, if your morals go with what the killer's doing, mm. you'll idolize that killer. Mm. But as far as women, mm. yeah. I think that women do kind of have like it because you know killer's aggressive. So yeah. I think maybe that's where it might tie in. But my I wouldn't say obsession, but I love to watch stuff like that because I like to get in the psyche of those people. Yeah. Because in my mind, mm. when I think about um, human trafficking, child trafficking, mm. murder, mm. I can't fathom what it right. would be like to stand in a room with four other people and be like, look, this is the plan. We're going to pull up on them. We're going to steal them, mm. kill them, put them in the dirt. And everybody's like, bro, yes, let's do mm. it. And this is really what happened. So to me, it's really interesting to get into the minds of them and like, how did you grow up? How did you get here? What is yeah. blocked from you that nobody, like everybody else is um, seeing like, oh, this is not a good idea. What made you do it? That's kind of what makes yeah, me like intrigued. Precisely. What made you Perspective. do it? Perspective. That, that's really, yeah. interesting. that's the reason why mm-hmm. I want you because as well. Watching the shows, you just see most of them are don't come from homes where are very loving. Mm-hmm. It's always something traumatic going on, or they've had something done to them. So mm-hmm. I feel like it just stems from home life most of the time. Mm-hmm. If you've mm-hmm. been through trauma, you're gonna think certain things are okay. You're gonna feel certain things. But like, well, this makes me feel good, so I'm gonna mm-hmm. do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they actually take their brains a lot of the time. They try to take the uh, serial killers' brains and study the brains to right. see if it was um, nature, nature, mm-hmm. or nurture. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Jeffrey Dahmer's dad when he was growing up, he would like pull over to the side of the road and take animals and like to bond, he would di- like, uh, what's an, uh, dissect them. Dissect yeah. them. Yeah. So they were like, well, maybe that's the reason why he also didn't get love. His mom was crazy. And the dad was like, I don't want you guys to open up his brain. So Jeffrey Dahmer, which is the, probably the craziest killer, we never got to study his brain, which oh, is even crazier. And he also yeah, mentioned that he liked physique, physiques. Mm-hmm. So the physique that he liked the most was the black men's mm-hmm. physique. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Same. So he was a physique mm-hmm. person because he killed other people, but you know, it just kind of hit home how many black folks that he did kill and eat. Yeah. Mm. He got away with it from Yeah. Him. Well, it was his tactic of moving mm. into the hood where he knew as a white man, mm. the police crazy. will never that even give well. you a second that look. You know, that as well. Oh, it's a white guy living in the middle of the project. Like, mm. oh, and I'm a white cop. So I yeah. would be like, oh, it's just gay stuff. And back in the yeah. day, these white male cops were like, I don't yeah. even want to get involved. And and the yeah. pers- the, his neighbor called the cops on him probably like 15 times. Mm. And right. he could have been caught maybe the his third kill but yeah. the same cops literally and then those cops got put on trial they and they won they became there were still cops wow yeah. the jeffrey dahmer series i recommend Shout it because it's crazy that, yeah that it's that really crazy these needs to be an end to the police brutality thank you samantha Michelle. hey that's my sister no, hey, sure. hey, thank you hey, yeah. can i get an thank amen for that amen. Amen. amen for sure in the police brutality are, are you saying are you saying you think there's a um a nature versus nurture thing with the women who are like really attracted to these people too? Do you think like they were abused mm. too? And then they see in these people like there's some sort of perverse attraction to these serial killers Man. because mm. of for the sure. way they were treated. Bro. Mm-hmm. Sure, sure, for I sure. Mean, I mean, yeah. you look for the type of man that your father was, that's gonna right. be number one. If that's the type of treatment that you're used to and to you that's normal and how it should be, then that's kind of what you're gonna like stick to. And a lot of women too, 
they they like the villain. They the Joker is sexy to oh, some yeah. people. Oh yeah, Jared Leto, Jared a bad boy. Oh, yeah. Girls love a bad boy. You know that's why they say nice guys. Spin I mean, but that's another that's type true. of bad. That's a different like, that's, right there. I, a, I mean, someone is straight they up says a different kind of bad. <laughs> like Girl, it's people's <laughs> flesh, <laughs> and the fact that he was getting naked pictures sent to him by women. He want. I mean, it's just sick. I, I don't understand. I, I would think that there's some type of dark place that those people have inside of them that decide that, hey, I can see what you have in you because I have that in me. So if you if you have any like uh, part of yourself that can say, hey, I can approve of those actions, there's some that somebody in you that's like, that, you know, yeah. so there was a certain audience that was that's attracted to yeah. those type of people. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like they also know how to play up those characters to be these like sexy, like bad characters yeah. because yeah. there's like a, a no way they were that They are cool. trying to romanticize. Like, like, you you feel me? Because Jeffrey Dahmer yeah. was a weirdo. He was a buster. He was. Yeah. yeah. He, I mean, like, but awkward. look at who played he him though. He plays every kind of psycho. Oh, he does. He did a phenomenal job. On American Horror Story. He just did a phenomenal job playing. The engineer. Wow. They're not lying though. They're not lying. Like, they're Definitely zero social skills. Yeah. Like, you know, it's not me being I got like, lucky. trying to judge or like, you know what I mean, label him, but let's be real, like he looks like he was socially awkward. Okay. Yeah, he does. And yeah. what he study his brain, he could have had like some type of syndrome. You know what I mean? Like just beyond the environmental, like right. just the way he well, some people His also mother. don't have an internal monologue, yeah. and so a lot of the I've heard a lot of the people that don't have an internal monologue tend to do like more bad things yes. because there's not a voice in their head being like, "Oh, this kind Period. of fucked up." You that feel me? Like they're sense. literally just living in the moment, and if they feel like doing some shit, they're gonna do it. And I never knew that. I thought everyone had an internal monologue, and a lot of Thank people you. don't. Thank mm. you. That I have a video. I'm going to reshare it just because she said that. Mm -hmm. And I was literally talking about your inner voice. And it kind of goes into like what I said in my introduction. Mm -hmm. Like, some I didn't know people didn't have a conscience. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, it's the weird. way I would talk to myself in a day as a child and through adulthood. Like, knowing I ain't talking to myself enough. Like, in my head, just the thoughts I think and having that back and forth and back and forth. And then you go out in the world and a lot of these serial killers, a lot of people just commit crazy crimes outside of killing, just they don't have that. Um, mm. I think they said it's something with the frontal lobe not mm. being developed or something being damaged. It's, mm. it's a whole thing how the brain works. But and just knowing that there's people out here that don't have that dialogue, that inner dialogue, mm. and because of that, they don't have the emotional capacity, the mental, it's just like, they're just yeah. out here existing. Like okay. literally, like if I'm sitting talking in this mic, I'm not sitting here thinking about anything else. Like I'm just sitting here talking in this mic, looking at you talking. Yeah. If I, like I, uh, my friend so meant someone. Present. Fully present. Yeah, which I think is That's is dope. Rare. Is really really mm -hmm. dope. But mm -hmm. I think that there is an importance of being able to communicate with yourself inside. Yes. You know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will. You know what? Let me, let's not go there. What? Mm. <laughs> no, because it's a whole rabbit hole. Let oh. me not. <laughs> See, I love this to talk about talk about this type of shit. Yeah. Me too. Mm -hmm. My audience, I gotta feed them something. Okay, let's feed them. Let's, let's feed them. Let's feed my audience. Let's center. Topic let's two. Let's help my audience. Okay, yeah. so boys, they want to know. You feel me? Oh lord. The boys want to know. Boys. Okay. Oh yeah, this is a men's podcast. All right. This is a men's self improvement podcast. Love that so, for us. Mm. The boys want to know. Completely different topic, but mm. like. What do y'all think about taking people back after a breakup? Like, uh, there's two, like, uh, schools of thought. There's people who are on some <laughs> fuck up once, you show me your colors, your cards, you're dead to me. Mm -hmm. There's an the other school of thought where it's like, let's take a break. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, uh, um, I fucking hate you. I, I hope you get run over by a truck mm -hmm. two, three weeks later. You should have chosen love. Um, you're so right. like, <laughs> Am I lying? No. No, no it's just me. the way you... It's, it, but the accuracy. So yeah, the right. thing is, it's like, it's these two schools of thoughts, right? Is there a happy medium? Like, maybe, is there a number? Like, three strikes you out some people on that? I got you. I got right? you. Right, what is the, like, or is it just like, is that just, no, you just set yourself up because then they're going to do that shit again and it's like, your fault. So, me personally, I have a two-strike method, right? Mm -hmm. With anyone. And that comes with men or women, whoever I'm interested at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everyone should get two strikes because one, I get it, people make mistakes. We're human. We may have one fuck up. But two, after it's like two, it's like, yo, you should know better. Because if I have to tell you something, we're grown more than once, not to do something that I don't like or do something that I'm not comfortable with, you should know better. Mm -hmm. And with men, I try to give, especially, you know, black men, 
I get they don't get to open about their emotions a lot. I was just talking with somebody, I'm not gonna say their name, but they didn't really get to open up with someone before. And um, I get a lot, like a lot of my guy friends tell me that sometimes when they talk to their girls, they don't feel comfortable for them to get vulnerable. And that's crazy to me because I would rather my dude be vulnerable with me than with someone else. Mm, Cause if they yeah. can't find that comfort here, they're gonna go somewhere else looking for it. And that's where sometimes cheating begins. I'm not gonna say I blame it just on that. But there are reasons why people do things sometimes. Cause if you don't provide certain things, you were gonna look for somewhere else. I will say, mm -hmm. I love everything you said about mm -hmm. like, you need to have firm, rigid boundaries. Yeah. Because people will definitely take multiple advantage. Mm -hmm. So I, I respect that. I will say sometimes with men though, Yeah. you got a little specific with the like, that vulnerability, not be able to do it, they get it from somewhere else. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. A lot of times for men, mm -hmm. that other person they're getting that vulnerable part from, mm -hmm. they're not going to fuck that person a lot of times. It's yeah. different with men. It's like, mm -hmm. we can be completely vulnerable, but it doesn't translate into, like, intimacy, sexually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whereas it's weird. It's like, we can be completely non-emotional, but that's sexual. Mm. So it's like a vulnerability doesn't make us like sexual. Whereas, Can you explain that to me? Because so I'm still trying. I'm I'd be trying going. to figure that uh, out. So, where you're going. So yeah, yeah, I have a guy have best, a best friend, friend, so I feel that. I have a woman best yeah. friend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And naturally, I'm very em empath. I can dive really deep conversation wise, mm -hmm. but she's pure like I see her as like a sister, like a friend. Yeah. yeah. But what'll happen is like we'll be diving deep, and then it's like she's getting a little closer. She's getting because it's like just we just so. Connecting. Yeah. Where she translates more as like just a physical proximity. Yeah. Right. Right. I just be diving deep, but I don't gotta feel like that. Yeah. Right. 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 Versus like a man, and it's obviously men and women have different doses of masculine and feminine energy. Yeah. So you might have guys like this, but on average, I've noticed that a lot of women, when they get that emotional connection, yeah. that kind of allows for the sexual part more. Mm. So. Yeah, it makes a lot yeah. of sense. That's why uh, yeah. there Absolutely is right. some yeah. sense of. Um, okay, can I wait before I get into that? I wanted to touch on that too, okay. strike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I feel like it is beautiful to set boundaries for yourself, mm -hmm. but it also depends on the offense. Yeah. Because there are, you know, a lot of people are hard on themselves and others. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, like by default, by being hard on others, it's like, hey, you know, you should be like this. You should do this like that. Right. And by all means, a lot of us are really learning each other we're literally learning each you. other and it takes time to learn someone some people jump into a relationship and they haven't had the time to get to know each other right. some people have been friends and then they eventually cross into other right you know lanes but either way when we're all living in individual worlds so I, I think that um, a lot of us haven't known how to how to uh, take those necessary steps we need to take in relationships. Mm -hmm. So we put ourselves in positions where we we uh, formulate certain levels of codependency. Mm -hmm. We want that person to uh, do what we want them to do, yeah. and they might not have the capacity. And so we do have to do a lot of soul searching. And I think a relationship is a relationship, but there's a lot of individual work that has to be done in order for anything to work in that type of sense. And going back to what you said about like someone you know, like translating that intimacy into vulnerability and all mm -hmm. of that. Uh, that happens, definitely. We do have a responsibility to create those boundaries as well, mm -hmm. to say that, hey, it ain't that, you know? Yeah. Because yeah. it's gonna, those types of things happen. You know, we all are, are emotional creatures, even if we feel like we lack emotions, we still have those. Yeah. Right? We, we operate different ways. So with, with us being just more gentle with each other, knowing that we all are walking paths and we all are figuring out life, you know the way we need to figure it out. Um, it, it's just really important to set those healthy, bo healthy boundaries of self mm. before we figure. You know, oh, what, what are we gonna uh, stop other people from doing? Because they're gonna live and they're gonna figure out life, yeah. regardless. So you know, we just gotta figure, figure out how to. I'm over second persevere. chances. Mm. I'm over it. Mm. I'm fucking over it. And Wait. I'm gonna tell you why. Let's <clears> hear <throat> it. Mm. Because <clears throat> I'm a second chance has bitch been that my whole fucking life. Mm. And I always give people second chances because I've been giving second chances growing up. And you know, when you're a bratty little kid and you're a bitch to your sister, and my sister's really like the biggest person. Like she gave me so many chances to mm. be the woman I'm meant to be today. So in relation, I'm growing up and I'm like, okay, you know, I can't hold people to be in my mind what I think they are. You know, people grow and if I love, I'm like a big like relationship person. If if we've been friends for longer than two years, chances are we'll always be friends. Mm -hmm. And I always let people in, people in, people in, and it's gotten me to like 
be a little bit more closed off the older I get mm -hmm. because the more you let people in after they've already crossed those boundaries and fucked with you, it's just they continue to do it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying all the time, but I think in a lot of cases when you let someone in again, it's kind of you being like, it's okay if you do things to me, yeah. I'm going to let yeah. you back in. Mm -hmm. Now, rephrase back to my sentence, I think second chance is the real second chance, that real second chance is okay. Mm -hmm. But other than that, even with friendships, relationships, it's so important to be like, we don't, you don't deserve to be in my space anymore. Mm -hmm. Still love you. Do you verbalize this? Yeah. Mm. Wow. Yeah, still love mm. you, still fuck with you, you just need to be over there. Mm. Because you mm. can't be in my space because one, you're irritating the fuck out of me. <laughs> and I'm gonna leave and I'm gonna wanna talk about you and I don't wanna do that. Mm -hmm. And two, you're just, our energies don't match and that's okay. Have, and you, have you done this, to, have you vocalized this to people? Yeah, the first time it was, yeah, what was, many times. What was their reaction like? Um, I think with women, as friends, it, it's a weird vibe like mm. really bitch like what Absolutely. and I'm like yeah like what'd you think you were gonna keep being my friend and you crash my fucking car mm. bye Ooh. like yeah. bye yeah. bye yeah. like sure it was an accident but you lied about it so boom that's it wow. and it was my mom's car bye wow. Yeesh. yeah so that girl she literally like just took it wrong I would say um how else you take it right, and, and then I dated someone and I told them that too like yo I just don't think it was it was tricky because we were in like a really intense relationship outside of just the relationship like we we're in the same group everything mm -hmm. and I was like I don't think this is the right thing to be doing like we don't match like we should just need to be friends like there's no more second chances you already fucked up once mm -hmm. and that person did not take it like would not take it like I hope you fucking like, I hope, you know, I'm praying on your downfall. Like, like literally just was a, a toxic person to me just because I told him like, yo, I don't want to be like a thing anymore. And we still have to be around each other, but like, let's keep it cool and didn't take it well. Um, so for the most part, I haven't had like people take it super well, but I have had people like, like okay cool because a lot of people also understand like relationships are just that you know like I learned something from you you learned something from me we created something beautiful and now it's just time our, our time to part like so you don't just ghost people <sighs> I've ghosted people before. definitely so what, what makes it, why do some people you choose to like listen this not gonna work versus like you ghost people what's the difference I ghost people if you gave me like an overly weirdo vibe mm. you don't deserve mm. my goodbye explanation yeah mm. like if you just gave me like straight up weirdo creep you did too much too soon vibes, you just not gonna hear, hear from me again. Mm -hmm. And that's my message. Like, and I only do that to people I just barely met. Like, mm -hmm. if I met you three times and you didn't hear from me again ever, it's probably because I just, our energies don't clash and you're just not close enough to me to have an explanation. Mm -hmm. Have I'm you not been ghosted before? <laughs> yeah, I've been ghosted once. Once? Mm -hmm. What did that feel like? I felt like shit. But it was with someone I really loved. So that mm. shit hurt in. I'm gonna say that's different. Yeah. Ghosting someone you don't really care about compared to someone that you do care about is yeah. different. But sometimes yeah, it still feels crazy. Yeah. It's kinda of, it was just because it was a really deep relationship. So like I got it was it was like, okay, cool, like go ahead and ghost me. Go ahead, do that. Sometimes you have to though. That's what you say, like where you like double texted him and like take me back. Um, it was, oh no, it wasn't the take me back, it was just the... <laughs> <laughs> it, wasn't that one. it was just like, let's talk about it, like what's going on, like let, there's some type of... Like I said, if we're in a deep relationship, I'm not just gonna ghost you, I'm gonna let you know. I'm gonna ghost somebody I don't know. Right. But we know each other, I know you, like I know you, so like let's talk about it at least, like let me know how I fucked up. Mm -hmm. And I guess I didn't even, I they didn't want to talk about it right. yeah. and I know that sometimes things are embarrassing to talk about or mm -hmm. like people don't know how to express emotions so mm -hmm. I guess or, or they yeah. think you didn't deserve an explanation yeah so I, I say this to say like you have your rules and to be honest I actually fuck with your rules more because it's like you just met the person right mm -hmm. but the thing is everybody has their own rules yeah so it's mm -hmm. like somebody else might find you ghosted them if you see them three times it's like oh she this fucking she crossed the line right because right. mm -hmm. their rules might be and for their person might be I would never do that mm -hmm. so it's like when you do that to someone who would never do that yes. it hurts the most yeah. Yeah. just like your never do was like you would never do that to somebody you had an intense relationship mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. but that's just your rules right, right. a lot of people expect other people to treat them the way they treat other people right. but mm -hmm. a lot of times A this isn't communicated mm -hmm. and a lot of times B they're not given a choice mm -hmm. Right. so it's like you can communicate it and it could be a request Right. But you can communicate that same thing. It could be a demand. Mm -hmm. That's two different mm -hmm. shits. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right? Do you feel like 
you're able to demand anything out of anyone? No. No. It's, no. Oh, no, you can. I feel like you can do whatever you want. Right. But but <laughs> but like like for real. It, like you think right. for real like, you oh, can demand? I feel like you can you can you can demand anything cuz like we all have autonomy over our bodies. Mm -hmm. right? And we all have to live and die by our decisions in life. Mm -hmm. The culminations of our choices. So, I honestly feel like if you have any regret that you didn't demand that it's better to demand and face the consequences than to be like I wish I demand I did you know I wish I demanded that so actually no do what you intended to do but yeah. also heal to the point where maybe mm -hmm. that's not what you intend to do yeah I will say I demand loyalty in my intimate relationships mm -hmm. I demand that because it's not a request like when you don't do it you're gone like that's I would for me so it's like I demand a request, is it? Because you kind of give them a choice. If they don't do it, the choice is to leave. Mm -hmm. True. Mm -hmm. Okay, the key word I, is the, I can see it in demand that is, Yeah, demand is like... It's going to happen regardless? No, demand is like... It's the energy. It's like, mm -hmm. I, like you're expected to do this, and if you don't do this, then it's like, I have the right to disrespect you. In my opinion, that's demand. Or I have the right to shame you. I have the right to put you on blast. That's what I look at as a demand. Or treat you a certain way. I look at a request was more so... This, these are the kind of the rules. It's still firm. It's still setting boundaries. It's still saying it's this or that. But the option is the option that I might leave or the option that mm -hmm. I won't fuck with you if you do this. Do you think girls or guys are more demanding? Um, I feel like we are both demanding in different ways. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I feel like men could do a better job at communicating their demands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, will, I will overall agree that. I feel mm -hmm. like women sometimes over communicate. Yeah. Their yes. demands. Absolutely. And sometimes it overwhelms. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And a yeah. lot of times, going back to the needs part, right? The biggest problem is it's that we don't communicate problems. our needs. Right. So, and we expect our needs to be the same needs that the other person wants. Right. Mm -hmm. That a lot of times men kind of just assume, like, oh, let me just treat her. Like, I love to go hiking. So let me invite her to this hiking trip. She, she should love it. No, you love hiking. Yeah. <laughs> that's how men think we think they're like oh I love the game so look, she should be cool to go to this fucking you know Starcraft tournament it's mm -hmm. like no that's what you like mm -hmm. right but it's like that's where the problem comes in because men expect the woman or their partner to kind of be on the same page and then when she's not but then she also is like oh I'm communicating all my needs right. but it, it's kind of like honestly the truth is men do not like to be told what to do Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> we like to have the option mm -hmm. to do it yeah. Yes. Whatever we feel like we're being told to do, and they're not going to do it. And honestly, yeah. and it might be depending on how you were raised. But let's be real. <laughs> I love my mother, mm. but you know she's a strong, independent black woman. Mm -hmm. And she like when you get in the house, you get in the house. When you take out the trash, so it's like mom's voice. Like get off the game, go set the table. Like mm. so it's like we don't want another mom. Yes. Yeah. That's why we moved Some out the men house. do, though. You want the men. They do, but they don't want, the, men they want do. the good part. They want the good part of a mom. Yeah. Trust me, I met like a, a, a good part boy. of a mom. The good part of But they don't want to tell me what to do. Yes. That's the toxic part of mom. They the man wants dominion in the house. Trust me, I have a man that's problematic. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Yeah. So if you give a guy an option, what do you do then? What's that? If you give a man an option, what are they going to do with that? Choose. Yeah. But what if they don't choose? And they just let it sit. It's still well, a choice. It's not a choice. choice. <laughs> not choosing is a choice. Not choosing yeah, is a choice. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. You A and B. Okay, I'm okay. You, I guess that's 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 a, you made a choice. You chose. Uh, so again, it goes choice. back to it goes back to people's lives and everybody's living like their own experience. And mm -hmm. you know, if we're trying to coexist as anything, friends, <laughs> relatives, you, relationship, you name it, we all have. We walk and march the beat of our own drums. Yeah. So a lot of times, like the, the conflicts, they're, they're really from a lot of simple misunderstandings and people not respecting boundaries mm -hmm. or respecting that people have a path that they have to walk. And you know, that's ultimately what you're saying. And I, that key word that you said, heal. Yeah. A lot of people need to heal. We have to heal. We have to heal all of the uh -huh. traumas that we have from prior relationships taking it into new ones yes. mm. expectations of people mm. expectations of even friends because that whole term friends that gets thrown around mm. a lot of times we're not even a friend that we request other people to be because we don't know like like we don't have the capacity all the time to uh to we can't make everybody happy you yeah. know and that's understandable um, so that you know it goes back to 
us like everyone can't make us happy so a lot of times we operate in ego and we don't realize that that is what the driving force is mm -hmm. behind a lot of our decision making but it's okay that's why we go back to healing mm -hmm. healing is the the word of this year is the word of life you know yeah. like just heal heal uh, whatever it doesn't need to be because it's going to improve those relationships and improve the relationship we have with ourselves and the creator you know that's just where mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how about that Let, let's look at the comments mm -hmm. Is to be, what is it to be really fully healed? I don't you know think what I'm saying. Yeah. So it is everyone's own. That's crazy. I turned it down. It's still going. Their own life. So I'm turning off. It's, it's like it's echoing. Yeah, I turned it off and it's still. It's 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 you funny. <laughs> that's all it is. It's divine order. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. Oh, your phone off. That's the devil. Yeah. Hey. Come in. You know, it's the energy sometimes. It's like, hey, y'all get too real here. But I'm going to let it go. What are you all's deal breakers? You know, everybody has deal breakers. Some Some guys are like, you got to be over five foot two. You know what I'm saying? I don't care about that. shallow. It's so shallow. silly and shallow. I'm not, definitely not speaking for myself, yeah, but it's, like, you know, certain weird. people. It's like, I think like, everybody's a little shallow, um, to be honest with you. To we some, all have a sense. That's true. I mean, you, yeah. Everyone has a, I mean, not everyone, Every, but I have a type. Like, yeah, everybody mm, has a type. I have like, a type. Too. I can't be with a guy that's like that or a girl that's like, it is not because you, you don't like them as a person, mm. but like, if it's a guy and I'm just like, I like you as a person, but... I'm not, you're, 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 you're not going to hit that hairstyle, wow. that height. you like, I feel like everybody has a oh, type when you sorry. look at somebody that makes them attractive to you and sure, as you get to know them, that takes it away. But mm. believe it or not, and I feel like I say this a lot, people look at me crazy. <laughs> you do indeed judge a book by its cover. I guess when so. you, when you see a book, you're going to be like, well, the cover drew me in and everything else I read is what I love, so I don't care about the cover now. Mm -hmm. But you don't go after a person you like, God, I can't imagine waking up and seeing you, but the insides of you was just enough for me. Mm -hmm. it's, it's it's an initial, it's a human attraction that kind of mm -hmm. starts it, mm -hmm. even if it's a little attractive. Yeah. Have any of you ever, let me ask a better question. Mm -hmm. I love everything you said about the mm -hmm. cover book. That's, that's a different analogy, I like that. I will say like, have any of you, been in a relationship with like your like biggest crush ever e like the, the one like the, uh, the, one, the that, one i thought it was at the yeah, time like yeah titanic notebook shit but yeah. except they don't die um, uh, twice, 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 twice yeah, it, it, yeah it it's, it's happened to me wait like you crush the one and they actually like date date not it's, just it's, it's happened to me no, I like, have, and I've also had a crush on them before right. like you could have met them and then like in like type like, like the one you like Oh my journal God. about it, like you just like, oh, I wish. I mean, I feel like we, you know, relationship. Like, I can't relate. But like, you know, but you actually yes. pull them. Yes. yes. Relationship is a relationship. Yeah, like, what, 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 out of the end? Is, is like, I, I kind of want to know because I want to see like, why? why the psychology behind I've that. I've also been with people that people that. couldn't imagine that I would be with. Yeah. So that's, that's why I, I hear where you're coming from, uh -huh. Liz. But another part of me is like, man, I've dated like, different types of guys that people probably would not look twice at mm. or even give a chance. I feel know? like dating yeah. dating the person that in your mind <laughs> yeah. was yeah, the depends. person. Like, to you. You're right. Yeah. To yeah. Yeah. Like, this is the person I imagined myself with and then you meet them. That happened to me. Yeah. And it was a beautiful relationship and I yes. loved him so much and it was like, mm. re like really, I thought that was my man for life. Yeah. Um, but then we just like grew up and he wasn't shit and yeah. you know what? Well, I will say, we're, I'm young, like I'm 24 years old, yeah. he's my age too, so mm -hmm. it's like, I understand what it feels like to develop into like your sexiness and you know, you got people in your DMs and you got people mm -hmm. hitting you up and it's hard not to feed into it because it, it, it's from, it derives from ego, like this makes me feel good to know mm -hmm. that all these people are hitting me up and da da da. So like, I don't hold it against him, but I, like I said, loyalty is my biggest one because if I'm in a relationship with you, I'm not gonna entertain shit. Mm. I'm gonna, someone's in my DMs, like that bitch, swipe out. That's mm. it, I don't need to entertain you, I don't need to make it feel like, oh, I have to keep this relationship, this DM relationship going because it makes me feel good. No, if I have a man, that's my man. Mm -hmm. Nobody can get in my DM, nobody can, no. So I expect the same thing. And I wasn't able to get that, so I had to let it go. Mm -hmm. on, on the last leg of the relationship, mm -hmm. were you entertaining some of these DMs? What, what like, like right before it all yeah, happened? Yeah, some people, so one thing that I-, mm -hmm. I She said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, okay, so we had broken up 
first and then I gave him a second chance and then we started dating again but this time around I was like you know I'm not gonna be the same exact way I was last time because I got myself in a hole I was like you know I'm gonna have my little side not side pieces but it's like you like before we both know that there's some type of attraction if you were in my DMs like I'm gonna like the message and maybe send you a heart but nothing more than that right mm. so when so we broke up a double, a double check on the, them likes like, <laughs> mm. right now I wasn't I didn't have the mentality like for the last few months, like I didn't have the mentality, like absolutely not, nobody, because you already cheated on me the first time. Mm. So this time, I'm gonna play it real cool. I'm, mm. I'm keep it cool at least for a year, mm. because I'm not gonna give you my all when we just right. went through this. And I'm very glad I didn't give it my all, mm. and I'm glad I kept my walls up because when it happened again, I was like, I was prepared. Twice? Yeah, mm. Mm. I was prepared. I was prepared. Well, I was like, I knew this was gonna after happen. After the first, what made you take a back after the first year? Because he was like the one to me, you know, like the yeah. one and it was a person I prayed for and I imagined and we were together for two years and then I was like, you know, he messed up and I love him and I know he's a good man and I still think he's a great man and I think he's going to have a wonderful life, but not with me, you know, like mm -hmm. that's just life and yeah. Pretty did much he keep in a relationship with this girl you cheated? I don't fucking know. I don't mm. give a shit. And if he did... Kudos. 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 You know what I'm saying? I'm sure she's a bad You never know someone's journey, um, too. You know, there yeah. is such thing as people changing, but I understand that it's, at least they call a spade a spade. It's like if someone tells you who they are, believe them. So yeah. I understand and for your own self respect and your dignity. You know, what was it like when, the second, this, when you brought him back? Was it the same intimacy? Was it the same? No, yeah, for sure. But that mm -hmm. part, sure. But that's what could It was like, <laughs> it's the love. Like, the <laughs> trust for me is everything. So, like, mm -hmm. If you cheat on me one time and I take you back, like there's just always gonna be a wall there. Like I have terrible relationships with starting from my dad, you know, starting from my dad and my seeing my brothers and my cousins cheat and beat and like I've seen terrible things like in my eyes. Mm -hmm. So like I already have all these walls with men and I'm always very vulnerable mm -hmm. about it when I date someone, like, hey, like I have a lot of walls up. So if you wanna be serious, like just know like I'm putting my heart in your hands. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. The fact that that wasn't respected was also like just really shitty. Yes. Um, what was the original question? Sorry, I just tried Because a lot of times. Oh, was it the same? The second time. No, 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 absolutely not. I mean, I still loved him the same, and it's just like I don't trust you the same. Mm -hmm. And I and I always have my eye on you just a little bit because mm -hmm. I know what you're capable of. And I think if we would have stayed in a relationship for like three years and he proved himself to be a good man and you know like I've changed for real, that would have gone away. But I'm a time person, like I told you earlier, yeah. like yeah. patterns to me are everything. Right. Everything, I check, like uh -huh. I watch people, especially mm -hmm. the close people around me. And if you continue to have a pattern, I'm just gonna know that's you. Mm -hmm. I will say this, like, I do not approve of cheating. I think right. cheaters are, like, the lowest of the low. Right, right. for sure. Because at least, at least players or whatever, like, at least they're single. Right. Yeah. So it's like, if you're just going to be about that life, just be don't, single. just be mm -hmm. single. I'm sorry, like, but that shit's grimy. It's very grimy because it's like, you want your cake eaten too. Like, you still want to have that come home too, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That pull the uh, dinner table chair out. But then you on the side, like, that's, like, the lowest of the low, right? It's almost right. a little Can psychotic. I'm not going to lie because... Mm -hmm. it, when you're in a relationship, you share with that person mentally, spiritually, physically, oh, and emotionally. Man. So you're sharing all parts of yourself oh, with this yes. person. And the thing that tweaks me out is like, you're coming home to f have sex with me and talk to me and open up with all these different sources, but you're lying about something you know would hurt me so deep. Mm. That's the part that's the just, lie is even worse. Yeah, like that's the part that doesn't get, like I don't understand. If like, you told the truth, would you have not broken up with him? Like, I fucked up. I was drunk, and this chick was hot. Fuck. Mm. No, that's mm. what he did. He's like, I blacked out. I'm sorry. Like, I didn't know what happened. I was so, so drunk, so I blacked out. He didn't lie. I was conscious. No, they were, he said he just, yeah, like, was with her to get, like, weed and shit. But, like, it was a lie, but it's trying tough, to make yeah. it seem like I was just blacked out. But, like, no. Okay. If you want to cheat, you can say, hey, honestly, I'm horny as fuck. I want to fuck on another bitch. Perhaps a little white girl. You know, something different. A little different flavor than you. I'm finna go. I can respect that. Okay, wow. bet. Thank you. I'm gonna go get my piece too. Bye. Mm -hmm. And that's, oh, you know, yeah. like, and we can break up and we can go do our own thing, but the fact mm -hmm. that you're gonna go fuck some bitch you'd barely know and come home to me in my bed and fuck me, not even knowing what you brought back home to me, mm -hmm. perhaps half the time people don't even get STDs, but what if that bitch had something? Exactly. And you came home to your wife, 
to, and give that shit to me, that's right. disgusting. That's, mad disrespectful. Mm-hmm. that's disrespectful mm-hmm. as fuck to not even think of Ooh, me. Yes, yeah, another level of savagery. That is we mean, we gotta have people think about that. Though. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, I cheated. I've been cheated on. Yeah. Which came first? I cheated before I got cheated on. Um, <laughs> and to so this day, the person does not know. So if they're smart enough, maybe they'll figure it out now mm-hmm. um, who that was. But I did this. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But not to be intimate. Why did you cheat? Um, because I wasn't pleased, and I physically, feel like emotionally, uh, physically first, and then I think mm-hmm. it was also like emotional mm-hmm. at a point. Mm-hmm. Like it wasn't. It was abuse to me, mental and emotional. Mm-hmm. And then it became like I'm no longer attracted physically. I consider myself demisexual, so mm-hmm. that means yeah, what does that mean? demisexual. So they mm-hmm. put it on a spectrum with LGBTQIA. I mm-hmm. personally don't think it's that. It's under the asexual um, category, which means I can only connect with an emotional, mental first. Like mm-hmm. I don't, and this is weird. That's only talking about sex. Um, I'm really awkward because I do it, but it's like I, I realized at a teenage age like when you're puberty i couldn't get horny because i don't know you so you could look good aesthetically to people but mm-hmm. i don't know your energy mm-hmm. so this won't work so mm-hmm. when i'm disconnected from my partner emotionally and mentally guess what's not happening so, mm-hmm. so if someone else is vibing with me over here in those ways guess what's happening now for me where mm-hmm. it's not happening with you but see i still have a care for you it's not like oh i don't love you it's mm-hmm. like a now what do I do? Mm-hmm. So and then that awkwardness of how do you separate? So I did it. Oh, I was guilty. I felt terrible after mm-hmm. I did it. I but I was conscious. I wasn't drunk. It was a clear minded thought. Like mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm trying to work this out with you. It's mm-hmm. not working, but it's kind of working over here, and I'm not even trying at all there. Mm-hmm. So yeah. what do I do here? And mm-hmm. I know there's a heart in the balance. So mm-hmm. it was that decision, and then also later than being on the other side of that right Mm -hmm. so get cheated on and it was so where you're saying psychotic because i Mm -hmm. feel like i did continuously cheat Mm -hmm. that's one thing so it was a one and done it was Mm -hmm. like she was one and done i was a one and done I just did it and like, okay, this is not for me. Yeah. I feel guilty. I can't and continue really, to lie. Yeah. Mm. Carry a narrative, yeah. right? But I did do it with the intention of like, I'm not happy here. Yes. Mm-hmm. But but I like this so much. Let me just. And I was mm. younger, so I'll yeah. say that too. I did mm. that at like, I, if I say the age, don't know. I get it. Yeah, it's, cool. Say, it's, hey, cool. it's hey, cool. When I was younger than these, you know, uh, God, look, she not so on that. Be outside, be outside. Yeah. 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 People know people. Yeah. I spilled the beans. It's and that that motherfucker watching, he finna get like, what? And you was with that person. Yes. And I'll be like, don't tell them I said something. Yes. So yes, I carry the story. I will say the secret. I'm sorry. I watched this podcast. to that. What? Oh, we get the big ass. Is this the cheating? Figures? It's a spirit. Chill. Oh, it's yeah. Relax. What figures Calm that shit down. <laughs> I, I, I be calling it spirit figures for like yeah, yeah, yeah. I call it plan G's. Yeah. 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 We all had none of that. That's how you call cooties back in grade school. That's the cooties figures. Yeah. 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 I kind of agree because cheating, cheating, this is why I ended my life. Cheating is situational. <laughs> <laughs> and yes. for me personally, let's hear it, Elizabeth. I felt like <laughs> I was almost pushed to it, mm. which, is, which is fucked up to say. I know Ooh. I felt so pushed to it to a point, okay. Like without your consent? <laughs> Let's go backwards okay. in my life. Right. Right. I, I have a daughter. daughter. Push. I have a daughter who's currently eleven. Mm. Me and her father were if you if you ask him, we was never together. Mm. So but we lived together. We were very exclusively and I was younger mm. too. I was about when I first met him I was seventeen, he was eighteen. A year older than me. Mm. To him, if you go back to two thousand ten and eleven, we was never together. Mm-hmm. I was held to the standard as we was. He wasn't though. Yeah, so he was it's... out there doing whatever he wanted. And I would always be hurt by it. Like, is it that easy? Do I mean nothing to you that you can look me in the face and then bend that girl over? Does, is that what it means? And he mm-hmm. was just like, you 
putting too much into it. You making it too deep. Mm-hmm. It made it to the point where it numbed me to cheating. Because honestly, he was my first boyfriend too. I was real nerdy in high school. First one. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I didn't have the courage to Because. talk to boys. Whole whole nine yards. So it made That's it to a point tough. where, yeah. To me, it turned into like. Got your lick back. Yeah. Ah! So the first time I decided to do it, and it, it was it wasn't a one and done. It was with that person. But I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna do me. I'm gonna I, do okay, whatever. Yeah. And yeah. the moment I started to do me, that's when, but you my girl, how you out here mm. fucking on this person? But that wasn't the energy that I got. So going into relationships after that, because after I had my daughter for a good maybe six or seven years, I didn't date nobody. I was just I was somebody's mother. And that's all I was doing. Mm. Right. Around the time when I met her. 2016 is when me and her met. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Papa, no. That's when I was just like, you know, I want to, I was about 24 at the time. Mm-hmm. I was like, I want to do stuff. You know, mm-hmm. my daughter, mm-hmm. she's older. She's in school. She's with my parents. I'm about to go and be a hoe. <laughs> <laughs> I am about to hoe. Hey, look, don't stand at that. Don't, don't punch me. Because, look. I'm about to go out here. <laughs> Stop I'm about it. to see how you twist me and how you jump. Just, uh, I'm ah, screaming. Like, ah, she she made a choice. She literally <laughs> made a choice. Uh, I made it was like, Mommy, Timmy. 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 Like, mm. It only takes one friend to get you out there. And then all of a sudden, it was I like, just decided, like, mm. I want to, I want to, Try some dick. I want to get. She said, I'm going to be smacked on a foot. Damn. She wanted to test the water. She wanted to her toe in real quick. It came to a point in my life (laughs) (laughs) where I was just like, you have my entire adolescence there, my teenage years, where I was nerdy. I was approved. I didn't know how to approach guys. That happens to a lot of people. And then this one guy comes into my life and he shows me attention. He gets mad when I said, I was like, you were a decision made out of insecurity. I didn't know my worth. Mm -hmm. I didn't think that. That's real. I was a short, chunky girl my whole life. Mm -hmm. Thin was beautiful. Lighter was beautiful. I thought I was ugly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I made it to a point where I would wear the big clothes. I wouldn't try to look cute. Wouldn't do my hair. Wouldn't do none of those things. I felt like I was ugly. Mm -hmm. And then one day I decided, you know what? I could fuck that dude if I tried. Yeah. Yeah. I, could, I could pull that dude mm. if I wanted to. Yeah. So it was a, a self-esteem thing as well. You were you were finding yourself and exactly. Finding and what I you saw myself do. as somebody's mom. Like mm. I went from being eighteen. I can't even say 18. I was 17. I tried weed for the first time. I had mm-hmm. friends for the first time. And then I went to being somebody's mama. Yeah. <laughs> there was no in between for me. Right. So. My daughter getting older, he's in and out of jail doing whatever the hell he's doing. Mm-hmm. Still coming out expecting coochie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because Lord forbid, it's like when I'm in jail, you better wait there. Lock mm-hmm. that pussy in a box. No. Mm-hmm. So when I, I made it to the point of going to school and I'm going to events, and I'm getting out there and people are actually interested, like, hey, who are you? I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna start doing whatever I want. And since him being my first contact with a relationship, I didn't. I was like, I don't care if he got a girlfriend. Mm. We fucking. Yeah. I don't care if he married. We. Man. I never get married. Though. Take what you Man. got. What you yeah. Exactly. I, what you I had no type of standard there. Mm. And the more I would date dudes, I was just like, I didn't take relationships serious. I didn't take mm. men serious. Niggas will say they love you, and then they will put their hands on. I didn't take none of it serious. Literally. I did not care about men. And I got married. Mm. <laughs> like, you know, mm. I, I got married. Mm. In the midst of my, because I'm not looking for nobody. I'm just out here wearing lingerie and That's t-shirts now. Hell yeah. <laughs> like, mm. I'm not worried My about body. it. And mm. that ends up happening. And when I tell you this, dating is hard. Being married is mm. hard. Mm. You have to, because it's easier to sit here and say, like, I have boundaries. Being married I won't say that you can't have boundaries, but you have to give 100% of yourself 100% of the time, even mm. when I don't feel like it. I don't mm. feel like compromising. I would like to look at whatever RuPaul's Drag Race, the Hell's Kitchen, whatever you want to do, I don't want to do. I don't have those options because mm. I can't actually reject you for myself just because I don't feel like it because you're now my other half. Mm. And me learning that, me still learn. Me and him got into an argument before I left out tonight because he felt like I. He told me I don't feel like you listen to me when I say stuff. 
I'm standing right here. I heard you, but you don't listen to me. Then I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. And it went on for like two hours. I didn't get what you know what you mean. You want me to listen to? I heard the words come out of your mouth. You are not Jackie Chan. I'm not. Chris. I don't know what you mean. But yes. as you start to kind of realize that, for me, cheating was one of those things where I, I have to sit here and think like I'm, I'm committed to a person. I don't want that because when it happened to me, I didn't like it. And I was out here doing that to whatever. I had this woman message me one day, like four in the morning. Like, Come to you as a woman. You ugly bitch. They out my <laughs> husband DM too late. Mm. And I was just like, yo, husband is my DM. You better check him before you check me. Mm. But I would hate know. it You're if done. I was just like, <laughs> so I have to take some woman. I was like, I wouldn't like that. So you need to check your dude first. And I feel like I everything know. is so situational that now since I have to walk a mile in that other woman's shoes and I realize that it's it's rickety and full of nails, I don't like it. Yeah. But I can't sit here and say I don't I don't know why it happened. Sometimes yeah. it's it's emotionally. I you wasn't there for me emotionally, so I found it with somebody else. Yeah. Mm. I didn't even have sex with that person. I just like to call them on the phone and talk to them when I'm feeling down. Mm. And that's Cheating in more ways than one. Right. Yeah, I was because people consider like, emotional cheating. cheating. What is yeah. cheating? Emotional mm. cheating. And honestly, that one mm. hurts more to me than physical cheating. Right. Mm. When honestly, it sounds funny, but it's maybe deeper. it's just it's way deeper. No, I know it's what you're like, talking it's, about. It's a little bit deeper to me. Like if you yeah. went to another woman and you gave her the vulnerable parts of yourself, which is so I mean, much harder to get hard. from that's, a man. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. It's Crazy. easier to get dick from a man than his feelings. Right. So if she got that out of you. She yeah. means more to that's, you than what I do. And that's she what I meant. And, and that's what I meant. Back to the well, and, whole time, he's not even fucking dude, that girl, though. Just, but I'm saying, though, either way, vulnerability is, is deep. If I, you're going to the woman to get the information that I feel like you could come to me for, that's yeah. different. I mean, you could fuck someone. Mm-hmm. Men don't really believe in fucking. You're right about that. But we talk. I got your heart. I got your emotions. Mm-hmm. You going to hold a woman to sit here and talk about how you feeling when you come to me? I care about how you feel. Yeah. You, we've spared our life together. I mean, I've sat here and cried with you. Yeah. You want to do that with another woman? That's, that's different. And yeah, I can just say, well, we can I'm see, we gotta respect the comments real quick. Bit. People showing love. Oh, okay. We're gonna come back to this because this is interesting. Yeah, it yeah. kind of goes, it's crazy how yeah, they circle from, from, right back to the initial point. From, from Paris. Paris. Oh, that's okay. different. Okay. We global in this mode. Okay. I love it. Yeah. I love the painting. Thank you, you guys. Listen, listen, I, I know you asked me, you was in a YouTube comment, you was in an IG live. We didn't have audio. But I don't know where I got it from, but that is Lord of the Rings. You catch the four hobbits, you feel me? Uh, I love that. Uh, thank, you, thank, you, thank you, King and Rose. A good panel tonight. Beautiful That's women real. right here. Listen, you know, mm. listen, we got to come correct. You know, every right, time, blessed, blessed with uh, beautiful Which queens, one? you feel me? Mm. I'm not complaining. Um, I want to talk about that, actually. Which about one? how coming back to, to cheating, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love how you said what I'm hearing, I'm, I'm not hearing I cheated, I fucked up. I'm more so hearing I cheated because he wasn't doing something right. Yeah. Mm. And before before we move into that, but when, when you're cheated on, it's also what he fucked up, I'm kind of hearing. Yeah. Mm. Right? Mm-hmm. So, and I fucked up. Right, right. That's good <laughs> accountability. Yeah. So mm. I'm saying this to say it's always like the other person fucked up whether you got cheated on or you cheated. Mm. Mm-hmm. So this is something that seems to be a pattern in men too, right? Mm. But not necessarily. Well, like the men f- cheating because the woman fucked up part. It's usually because they're not being sexually satisfied, mm. right? So I I will say, in the scenarios, right, mm. that you were cheated on, how were things intimate? Where, where it was a kind of like dry spell. I, I'm saying right. this to say, just like you were saying, like emotionally you felt like a, a gap and that's when you stuck okay. out. But with men it's different when they kind of feel a gap, like she not putting out or, you know, I put my hand around her. She's like, oh, not tonight. When, oh, right, right, right. And it's like, okay, he, just keep happening. It's week two, week three. Was this kind of a vibe and then he stepped out? Or was it like no. everything was good? Like no. I was holding it down and he still, what's kind of the vibe? Cause I'm kind of trying to dissect. I'm, okay. Um. I don't know how much of a story time you guys want. Because that story <laughs> was the first time and only time I got cheated on. That part. Okay. And I've had multiple relationships. So, and they're pretty long term. So, um, you know. Anyway, so mm. with that, I'm not terrible. That's my mm. point. Um, But this guy, so the time I got cheated on, it was really crazy. Because to me, like she's, I was going to see you saying, 
psychotic as a thing. Um, he was like that before me. Oh. Um, what I feel like happened with me that he decided to pick me as like, okay, I was like the bottom bitch, right? Mm -hmm. Like I'm at the bottom and it's, I'm holding everything together for you. Like he was every side of the city, there was a girl, but I was the main. So with that, I was mm -hmm. like, why did I get picked to be the, the, the next, the one scene? Y'all never exclusive. The, we were, we were to me, to, to the world we were in together. We were together. Well, he, well, he beat you his bae, so... It, yeah, I was on his phone plan. I met his family. Okay. We're claiming each other. Like, okay. this is my boyfriend. This is okay. when I'm with you. It's I'm with you. Like, we literally, I to me, we're together. To yeah. you? But this is what I'm saying now, knowing what he did. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, in that point, we got together. It's just me and you. Right. There was no cheating. It was like was there. Sorry to interrupt. Was there communication like this is an exclusive relationship? Yes. Okay, yes. Okay, okay. Yes. And he was the one that initiated. She knows because oh, wow. we okay. like all went to. And I'm saying this, but the old boy was crazy. crazy. <laughs> like like was it took crazy. her to like come to me like and give me um, as a woman. Not she had nothing to do with it. She saw something as when we were gut. Mm -hmm. I was so in Why'd love. Why'd you date him if if he's crazy? You said what? Like if he's so crazy, your friends ain't crazy. Why? He was her? like a. How do I this? What is the word for this type of person? That's what I'm saying. He was your type. Of, no. He's like a snake. It's like a manipulator. Him. Like you, he knew like, he could be everything well, each of you want. You a chameleon. Like, like, yeah, like he though. purposely oh, yeah. preyed on women. He knew, like he studied them. Like he literally would research the forty eight laws of power. Like that's a good he's book. studying that, but he's studying <laughs> you it yeah. with the ill intention to intentions. manipulate okay. and, <laughs> and get over. Like he was studying. I find this <laughs> later how to be a gentleman. Oh, wow. So you're literally purposely in you mass making yourself be this thing like God's gift to woman, essentially. Mm, so with stomach. that, you're but you're <laughs> telling them some most of them they're in a relationship with you. So we mm. have the women he dealt with, mm. the way it came out was like the boy is mine, like Monica Brandy, like mm. we figured it out, like but I have been sensing things. Like I said, she gave me the first little tip. But then it was like, I'm not really seeing, I can't find it. It's like a, and then he, he got good. so, yeah, yes. That's mm. why I'm saying he had a girl on every side of the city mm. of Chicago. He had a Bolingbrook, downtown, uptown, me, south side, west side. Like, I'm not lying. Like, these girls, I promise you, some of us are still like in each other's DM like not cool but like I can pull up the yeah. receipts like they did not block me we were all like this is crazy and they were apologetic to me because they were like dang like I had a question but I was under the impression I was under the impression I was under the impression and no one was but then too how long was this uh, about two years. Damn! So it, yes, 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 so yes. Mm -hmm. So that's, and it was crazy because months. I had a lot going on in my life. So I yeah. feel like my focus couldn't dig in. But see, God works in mysterious ways. How many ways. times a week were y'all hanging out? Every day. Well, how the fuck? Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, he was yeah. with me at school, after school, at my house, sleeping, spending the night. I'm at church. But so you were the main, though. Right. So mm -hmm. it was like, you the were time the I'm at work. The time that I'm over here doing a show, the time that I'm, you know what I mean? He's finding it. He's mm -hmm. finding also it. maintaining he's, emotional and his, connections. And he said he worked two, he did have two jobs, but Jesus the hours Christ. between the both and school, I couldn't understand. I could not understand. Oh, but man. when it all came out, it all made sense. Wow. And I'm like, damn, you could really live not just a double life, multiple lives. And that's when I started to think, and I told him, you're literally like psychotic. Like you have, it's something in you that you don't really connect like you you say you are like yeah. you're what I believe you to be you really can't be that if you're carrying this right. many relationships without a care for the effect that it does I'm so sorry mm -hmm. that happened to you no, I, I, I can say yeah. how it ended with and that's why I say God work in mysterious ways like I, I literally am going to put this in a book because um, I could have never thought of it like mm -hmm. all the scenarios I've seen in the movies <laughs> I was like, she yeah, said, my life is a movie is, for real. Like, that's what I said. My life is like a movie. It's literally the name of my book. Oh. And I don't know if that's a. I found that in psychology mm. that actually has to do with disassociating. I don't know what yeah. that means. Right. Okay. Gonna, I'm going to delve in later to what? You know, yeah. I mm. didn't know that. But maybe that's my life in a way um, that I disassociated. But that's another 
rabbit hole. Um, to go but with to go back. Oh my yeah. god! Like no, y'all can hear the stories like after. We ain't gotta put them on the front street because those yeah. don't we know. We should. I would but say. I'm sure. I would say, would like, say we should. You went to my brother's high school, so. I I'm like, get, okay, so look, <laughs> and the fact that you said yeah, that, right? Sick. Uh, I was like, like, all of us are so bro. Yeah. But yeah. you know, you feel me? So like, that was my <laughs> in a small scale though. That's right. all mm. the baby. That was high mm-hmm. school. Like she knows what she said when she said her brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I was, it, I was, like, <laughs> men are men too. Sometimes, like, sometimes I feel like, in the sense of him, I don't know, he's a little, like I said, crazy, but I do feel like men are visual. Like, mm. when she was saying, like, oh, the attraction starts somewhere, I always believe that men are phys- uh, visual first. Mm-hmm. So it's like they can literally be attracted to someone that they don't know. Mm. Yeah. With, and that's why I say, even though I sound I'm bisexual, I know women, like, we could be attracted, but they're like, ready to do it and this they're not it's not that like mm-hmm. it's just a release and i feel like if we go into the nature of things right nurture nature you add the nature of men like y'all are breeders y'all are meant to procreate right. like we you're supposed to find list. your mate right yeah. mm-hmm. like we're that's why they say you should watch the discovery channel to like really or animal planets yeah because yeah. Mammal. Mass- yeah. mm-hmm. we're mammals like we forget though we're human we're still mammals so right. when i say that it's all due respect like i'm not trying to be sound ignorant when i say men are men like in the sense of their physical nature and how they carry themselves a lot of the times it's like innate to yeah do that like mm-hmm. if they see a thick whatever like it's just like it's, it's, it's like, something I gotta and sometimes that. it don't even mean shit to it them it don't mean nothing it's just like a fuck it's and it's just, just like, like it's not like, that deep make it someone said that on your podcast they were like something about like yeah. we can be together I can be fucking you should not be worried man, about yeah. that man yeah. he went so viral at it just hate um, yeah I was man. like yo okay but I will say like to go along with what you asked um, you know like was it intimate before the cheating we were very intimate before the cheating, but I, for the last few months of our relationship, wasn't there, like, um, I would say I wasn't there as, my, as myself, as how I usually am, you know, like, mm. wake up and do this and that and that and pick up these projects and meet these people, like, I was, like, in a really deep depression because I had just gotten rid of my studio that I, my baby, my life, like, literally every day I got rid of that and... Um, it went with that partner that I had with that, which was like a very close friend of mine. And then a few, like I think like two months later, my brother died in a motorcycle accident. I'm so sorry. And thank you, thank you. And that was in September, like 26, so it was just four months yesterday. Mm-hmm. And um, I was just depressed. Like, I was just like, wake up, don't want to talk to anybody. Like, go to my living room. like put on my blanket and I'm just chilling in the living room like all day like I would like cook dinner for him and like take him lunch and like do like but I was just at home all day like and that's not me like if you know me I wake up and I'm into like let's fucking go and Mm. I think him like us coming back into the relationship and him seeing me like almost like slumped out was kind of like for him was like "Mm, maybe and I'm just assuming like you're not the person that you used to always be but I kind of held myself accountable for that, but then I had to realize, like, in the process of healing, you're always going to kind of, you have to go back into, like, a dark place to really, like, emerge and heal into mm-hmm. the person you're going to be after that. And right now, like, that's where I'm at. I'm rehealing and I'm relearning and I'm rebuilding with myself. And I think that could have played a role into him skipping out and being like, well, I need someone that's more emotionally there for me or, you know, that's not depressed as fuck in her house all day and yeah that i think that's where the disconnect could have came from but sexually um, nothing changed you know no. okay. i kind of feel you on that because like in my last relationship i went through a period of like covid where i gained a lot of weight i was like 170 i've never been that big and the thing i didn't really realize was a mind focused person i was with he was disconnecting from me because I wasn't doing what you do, which is basically, I wasn't going out, I like to go out, I like to do things, I like to be out every day, I like to get into different things and learn things, and especially networking, that's what you do, you have to be outside. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I stopped doing those things. And he didn't cheat, but he started being emotionally distant. Because mm-hmm. I was in an emotionally abusive relationship. Mm-hmm. So I feel you on that, because it's just like, if you change, your person might think, well, I can't deal with this, but I'm pretty sure you held him down yeah. when you needed it. And for some reason, which I don't know if you can attest to this, whenever men need someone, they need someone. And they expect you to be there, mm-hmm. and you are. But when you're low, for some reason, 
they just turn off. Their switch yeah. goes off completely. Mm-hmm. And I don't, don't say that's unacceptable. That's unacceptable. Because if I'm looking for a partner to be with me for a while and a long time, if I'm low, you don't have to be low with me, but help me get back yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. You know, shout happens. out to the ones that can yeah. do that. I'm a big yeah. communicator too. Like I like when I'm with a friend or with yeah, honestly, like a friend, family member, boyfriend, right. girlfriend. If I know there's something in your mind, I'm gonna dig. Like. Why are you sitting there? What's wrong? Yeah, What's on your mind? Yeah. And why do you feel exactly. like that? And do you think it's like, I'll literally sit there and dig because really you just need to get it out. And right. I literally had to call him like a month in on the one month anniversary and I was like crying my eyes out. He was like, what's wrong with you? And I was like, no one's asking me if I'm okay. Like, yeah. mm. I just went through some really traumatizing shit. Like I'm having nightmares every night. Like I'm scared. I'm like not feeling well. And literally no one has asked me if I'm okay. Mm. Like, especially you, like, why is this happening? And he was like, well, you, like, just don't, like, whatever excuse, talked about mm-hmm. it. But I think that's, like, plays a big role in, I will, in I, that. I will say this, you know, mm-hmm. two or three more questions, we've got to wrap up, but mm-hmm. I will say this, it, 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 it does suck. And that's where it comes into a part of self-improvement where men could definitely improve. Mm-hmm. I will say, going back to, we only project well, our, our truest beliefs mm-hmm. and we the needs that we want are the needs that we think our partners want mm-hmm. so that's where there's that disconnect because a lot of men we don't want necessarily other people to hear us when we're going through shit sometimes mm-hmm. we just want to kind of go in a cave mm-hmm. put on the game mm-hmm. sit with our thoughts that's mm-hmm. how we deal with our shit yeah. Yeah. and we actually be good we actually be straight mm-hmm. yeah. we be steady trying to say go talk about your shit I ain't gonna lie if you like went to Vietnam and like killed some people probably talk about that shit but if it's something like even like a death in the family or some shit like a lot of men we could just go to the cave and kind of take that shit we'd be good Mm -hmm. we'd really be good Mm -hmm. but women can't not all but a lot of women need to talk about it need to like that release so so what happens is Mm -hmm. you need that but he doesn't so when he sees you going through that he treats you the way that he would treat himself, which is he would want privacy. He would want to go into his cave. So he thinks that, oh, let me let give her some space because that's what he would want. Mm -hmm. So it's subconscious. So when they give you that space, it's not to shun you. It's not to spite you. It's not even like selfish. It's not even like, it's just literally like they think that's what they will want. So they Mm -hmm. just, it feels weird almost like, I wouldn't want to do that. Someone bothered me when I'm trying to go through my shit. And you literally have to break the fucking cycle. It literally takes like, it's hard. It's hard to break it. Yeah, that's so true. It's so fucking awkward for a guy to like, Mm -hmm. to kind of, um, I'm, sorry. I'm so sorry. That space. Yeah, and right. I think that's the beautiful thing about relationships and being in a relationship mm-hmm. is learning yourself even more. You know, like in every relationship I've had, I've came out of it, whether if it was a good or bad relationship, a whole different person with yeah. different, mm-hmm. not different morals, but stronger morals and yes. better boundaries. And that's what I was telling, uh, talking to her about earlier, mm-hmm. because it's regardless of any relationship you go through, whether it's a friendship or a real relationship, you grew from it. Yeah. Right. And when you you're not growing from relationships, that's where there's a real problem. Right. Where you yeah. have to look at yourself and be like, Am I being bitter? Right. Am I being bitter? Mm-hmm. How am I learning from every situation? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And sometimes mm-hmm. you can have your little bitter moment, but at the end of the day, you have to take a situation and be like, What did I learn from this? Yeah. Yeah. Because if you don't, you're gonna be stuck in the negative thoughts yeah. of it forever. Yeah. And I've seen so what it. am I holding to? That I've I've seen it to that I don't want to literally eat people up. And then yes. you're gonna keep attracting the same things. Yeah. That, like you're not breaking, like you said, patterns. It's mm-hmm. like you're constantly. It's like that's what they say. It's like insanity to keep doing the same thing and having the same perspective. It's like a whole Edgar Allan Poe quote, but mm-hmm. knowing that it's like literally insane to keep. You know, sitting in the same ways and doing the same things, and you expect a different result. Like, mm-hmm. you're yeah. literally doing the one, two, three, why would it not be four? Like, right. it, it just never changed. Like, you're not breaking this. And you know, something to what you just said, I'm happy that you I put that in words. <sighs> because I'll tell you this much my husband calls me, like, he's like, emotionally, you're very manly. I'm just like I'm a dude from a dude. What does that mean? Yeah. Because it was my father passed away. I'm so sorry. sorry. So, and I, I appreciate it. But you see, I'm just like at the, when he passed away, I was hurt. Yeah. Mm. That was my father. That was the first man. I, yeah. Mm. That man was like six three, three hundred pounds fireman. I felt mm. so protected exactly. in this world. Mm. Mm-hmm. And losing him, it was just like hard. Damn, I'm by myself now. And for mm. me to process it like I saw my mom she was gone through they had been together for well this year it would have been 33 years mm-hmm. so when he died he died November um, 1st 2021 
Wow. So, and I see my sister, she's like distraught. My daughter, that's those two is like that, distraught. And you know, I was just like, I just want to be here for them because I'm fine. Mm. And he was just like, you got to talk about it. Tell me about yeah. it. Tell me about oh, it. Exactly. Talk to me. <laughs> I was like, I'm fine. I don't want to talk about it. Mm. He was like, obviously, you couldn't be fine. You watched him deteriorate in a hospital bed. Mm. I'm like, I'm fine. You've been reading the books. You've been like, oh, she should and be like, like Man, this. Man, like, and I was just like, numbers too. I was just like, I'm fine. It's not mm. that I didn't love him. He was like, you come off as cold. Like, you didn't care. Mm -hmm. I'm on the inside dying. Can I just do that on the inside of me? And when I'm mm -hmm. ready to talk, I'll talk to you. Yeah. And he was like, I feel so shut out. Oh. Like, I'm not mm -hmm. a part so of it. he might be more feminine. He is. That's that's cool. Cool. Which like, is cool, yeah. And I was just like, I don't want nigga. And I was just like, I don't I knew what you said. I'll take it. Like, <laughs> there, there are balances. But I was like, I don't know yeah, what you want from me. When you keep coming to me asking me, are you okay? Do you want to talk about it? Do you do you want to play Call of Duty or something? Mm -hmm. Like, what do you want from me? I don't physic. I can't physically sit here yeah. and tell people the way I feel. Until I am one hundred for like, I want to go through all the stages of what do you call those? The stages the of grief. grief. Of grief. Mm -hmm. I want to go through that myself. And when I make it to acceptance, I want to then sit there and talk to you about every stage I went through. But I don't necessarily want to do that with somebody. I feel that. And yeah. I was like, when it was happening, I'm just like, you're stressing me out. Yeah. Because I never, in my, and it's crazy to always think, you're in my head, and I know it sounds stupid looking back at it now, I never imagined my parents dying. Mm. I never thought that they would die one day. Yeah. Like, they're mm. always here. How, where are you going to ever go? A lot of people feel that way. So but, when he did yes. die, I was just like, I was never, even though it took him from September 3rd to November 1st to die. He was like, you didn't see it coming? I Obviously, I saw it coming. But I in my head, I'm just like, he's going to my dad was sick my whole life. At the age of 30, when he was 30, his kidneys failed. He has had colostomy bags, kidney surgeries, heart surgery, so many things. I'm like, he gets sick, he goes to the hospital, he, he come home. Bad. Like, yeah. he's going to be good. And this time he didn't. And he was just like, talk to me about it. What are you feeling? What's on the inside of you? Like, this shit crazy. Like, yeah. like, I don't that's know. What was saying. Yeah. That's actually good. Like, though, that balance. Yeah. yeah. He might be the one who don't need to talk. And he's the yeah. one who but does. So that's, that's absolutely. still that polarity. People fear not giving it enough attention as well. Like, when they love you, you know, not wanting to put you, uh, like, like okay, like you're saying you're good, but he's feeling like you're not good. Mm -hmm. And I feel like and the way I'm afraid he, of how this going to translate. Yeah, like, yeah. this is how you handle the situation. Like you, whenever he goes through something traumatic, he wants to come to me and he wants me to sit there for five, six hours while he just gets all his feelings out. So when it comes to something that happens to me and I'm just like, my feelings are he really hurt. The same way, I'm yeah. sad. Elaborate on that. What? I just told you the feelings <laughs> I had. <laughs> like, I'm glad that we're in a generation, no. we're like mm. entering the generation of males being able to also have divine feminine energy and mm. females also being able to have divine masculine energy. Yes. What's, the fun, what's yeah. divine fin of it? No, 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 no. Let's talk Let's about just yeah. talk about the oh, like polarity. Life is balanced. Yeah, you know, life I'm, is I'm saying like back in the day they it wasn't like men that's why men have all I, I yeah. feel like have all these issues with yeah. expressing themselves because yeah. back in the day, especially in my culture, men need to be a certain way. Mm -hmm. And now we're West stepping thing. into we're yeah. stepping into it's Western. It's uh, Western. So, it depends on what society like as I'm I'm talking about Mexican culture, men are supposed to be one way just like Mm -hmm. females yeah. I grew up with my mom telling me if you don't know how to cook and clean a man will never yeah. love you like straight mm -hmm. to the point and for real Shut the and okay, you but I'm saying, <laughs> what, I'm saying <laughs> what I'm trying to say is what I'm okay. trying to say is we're entering this beautiful era where everyone's allowed to be anything yeah. and that's what is like beautiful for us to think about because when we have children they're not gonna be going through the same shit that we're going through yeah, you know they allow to, to be honest though I, I agree with you I, I think mm -hmm. in Mexican culture um, it's almost, I don't want to say a different world, but it is kind of a different world as far as like modern society. Like the West in general kind of isn't like that. Actually, we are the kids who kind of, if you weren't, uh, if you didn't grow up in a Mexican household, if you didn't grow up in like a traditional African household, if you grew up kind of like watching Disney Channel and shit and like, you know, all the social justice shit, we've kind of been in this for the past 
since the 90s. Mm -hmm. So low key, mm -hmm. we are the kids who've been doing what we want, but it's mm -hmm. still we're in these situations. Yeah. So, so what I'm trying to say is like, I think that not to say that doing anything is is good because sometimes when you do anything, you get left with nothing mm -hmm. because you don't know what you want. Yeah. You go you go through life without an intention. You go through relationships yeah. without a purpose. Without mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I'm not gonna lie you do need roles to an extent. Absolutely. Yeah. Whatever the roles may be, you need yeah. roles because what roles do is it allows people to navigate the relationship mm -hmm. from a place of certainty. Absolutely. Right? Because for the first six months, right, if it's a, a fling, you don't need certainty. Mm -hmm. Actually, you don't want certainty because we all want some uncertainty in the beginning, right? That's the uh -huh. sugar and spice. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? That's why they like, that's why mm -hmm. it's so excited in the beginning. It's like, oh, is she going to answer my text? Mm -hmm. Is she going to say yes to the day? Yeah. Is she going to like this dinner? It's like, we want that uncertainty, right? But mm -hmm. a year coming, six, a year and six months, like you start wanting more consistency. But when there's no roles, that's when the arguments happen. Oh, you're supposed to do this. Are you supposed to do this? It's like, yeah. well, we never talked about this because we mm -hmm. grew up being anybody. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's, it's just one of those things where it's like it sounds nice but it's like when it actually get down to it like i hate to say it, some of the like, longest relationships and healthy relationships were kind of some of these traditional ass relationships yeah mm -hmm. not saying it, it's a one shoe f so I, I i disagree with the one shoe fit all part but i think the part they got right was the rules and yeah. that in that case those rules just worked out i 100 percent agree with you i meant it more in a way where like men are now able to express their emotions yeah. more and women are allowed mm -hmm. to put their boundaries down more rather than like yeah. in a traditional household you gotta do this you gotta women do this mm -hmm. men do this yeah act like this feel like this traditionally that's how i was raised but i get what you're saying on like you guys y'all have been doing this since before some people even from the 70s and that's when you find like those very very like oh socially aware people but <laughs> I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely, I didn't want to say it, <laughs> but yeah. I That's think cool. it's mm -hmm. more what I'm trying to say, I think we're moving into a very beautiful era of people being more open with themselves and their feelings and being able to talk. Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. Let's speak about divine feminine energy. Yes. Yeah, That's, wonder, mm -hmm. So. What is that? If, I mean, I don't know if you want to define. Go ahead. Go ahead. You seem like you, <laughs> you, you seem like you in it. I've talked about this a lot about um, the divine feminine, divine masculine. So when we think about ourselves as uh, beings, we are all divine, right? We're all miracles. Something happened to create us. Whether it was our parents knocking the boots, or it was uh, you know some amazing molecule that you know created each individual with all that said um the divine masculine and divine feminine so when we think about uh, a lot of men and women today they are experiencing uh certain levels of having a heightened amount of masculine energy if you're a woman or a heightened amount of feminine energy um some people equate it to sexuality it's mm -hmm. not always the case yeah. a lot of times uh there are men that have grown up around strong women. Mm. You've grown up uh, more, more women than men. The man could have been around or not around. Let's just say the father worked a lot or the father decided that he wanted to be the uh, very masculine force within the family and, and in that place of position. And uh, I'm, not gonna, like, I'm not gonna talk emotions with my son. So if a man found himself to be more drawn to the feminine energy of the mother, sometimes that shapes the way that he might act, uh, might do things, might flick his hair a certain type of way, do certain things that create mannerisms that are feminine, but by all means, back to divine feminine when it comes to emotion and communication, emotions, a lot of times are equated to women. Mm -hmm. So like when men are not expressing themselves, it's taught to be the thing, like you don't gotta, you know, no, nah, chuck that up, don't, don't talk about, you know, that's soft. Uh, but then when you start to tap into that feminine energy of nurturing an emotion. It's like, I'm gonna talk about my feelings. I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna nurture. I'm gonna know how to cook and how to keep, you know, whatever, you know, upkeep, you know. So I think that's beautiful when a man can tap into those things and find balance within that. Mm -hmm. Cause balance is the word and that's mm -hmm. the key. Now back to women that have the divine masculine. Women, it's important for women to balance out their emotions because emotions are a part of what we have as women. We birth children. We have period cycles. We have things that show us that, hey, you, you should be emotional. You got to carry all these things. You got to do this and that for children, for people. Sure, sure thing, be emotional. 
but you have to be able to balance that out because that's when women tap into the masculine. Not, 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 that's not when, but some women, when they tap into the masculine, that says, hey, I'm going to be a little bit more practical and a little bit more logical rather than emotional. Mm. So a lot of times tapping into emotion and you go too far into sure, that, yeah. you, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's overwhelming to men. And mm -hmm. we, all have been, yeah. we all have been guilty I mean, of it. Key words to me that describe feminine, d divine feminine are intuition, inquisitiveness, oh, yes. Yes, yes. nurture, yes. together community um <laughs> to be able to take care of and mm. understand mm. i yes. think is something really beautiful about a woman yes. um when i think about a male uh, masculine energy i think provide i think protect yes. strength um nurture too um nurture for sure mm. and yeah i, I think I think they play hand in hand, mm. and that's why I think it's, I feel like I'm in my divine masculine a lot, right. but I, I also, f I am my divine fem feminine because I feel it inside of me, right. you mm -hmm. know, like, I get yeah. a period every time the moon makes a cycle. Me too. Yeah. Everyone does, you know? Yes. Yeah. Every time the moon, every yes. time there's everybody there's not a lot of women in there. No. 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 A lot of women moon. are. There's a full yeah. moon. Yeah. 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 Well, that's what it sounds no, like. Sorry, sorry. Like, sorry. 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 No, 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 but sorry. a lot of women have been in the same room with each other talking, be like, I'm a mom monthly too, I'm a mom monthly too, I'm a mom. this has happened. That shit is well, um, there's a new very month every month. We're right? interconnected. So every new month you get a period. Mm. I didn't want to mention that a lot of these things are generalizations. Most of what we talked about, because it's not everyone that operates in some of these things that we talked about, mm -hmm. but uh, the generalizations is very important to mention because like when we have thoughts about like how men could be your women, these are generalizations because there's a lot of different men and women mm -hmm. of all creeds and kinds. So, yeah. you know, we the, to, to, to whoever's viewing and listening, because um, a lot of men get defensive when it comes to like, and, and women. Like, mm -hmm. oh, you, so this is how you feel about men, this is how you feel about women. No, these are, you know, not everybody's the same. And um, I, I know that I always like to be like a mediator of that because I feel like sometimes when we get into talking about, and this is not to anybody in here, this is just in general, when we get to talking about the opposite sex and our dispositions, we, we don't always make it very specific that these are generalizations. These are generalizations. This is not Everything's every a generalization. Man, every woman. Mm, literally. Yeah. That's all. More of an experience. That's that Everything's think. everything. Yeah. Y'all so cool. Y'all so dope. Oh, lay, off the, lay off the spirituality woke terms. Everything is everything. <laughs> Everything's um, everything. Yeah. Every, what, what's it's the other one? It's going to phase out. Sad is coming into place. Pro projection. So. Mm. It's gonna stop. Codependency. Oh, chill. Mm. Gonna... chill. Chill, 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 chill. Mm. Please, please, please. I can't take it anymore. Mm. Trigger words. <laughs> What's yeah. that? You want to talk about that? Oh. Yeah. That's another podcast. That's a whole, like, that's a whole other thing. That's a whole other thing. But we got um, into it a little that's bit. That's a big ass mm. IRO. Like, mm. when, where people get you. Mm. They put on this mask of, like, I'm woke and I'm spiritual. Right. <laughs> like, right. They okay. take that shit off. Like, I burn your house yeah. down. Well. My intention was never to hurt you. Uh, Inquisitively, uh, transparently, I just transparently, I just wanted to burn something, Everything. and your house seemed to be that thing, and I never wanted to hurt you because uh -huh. I'm just a human. Manifestation. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Like, they, yeah. it, I hate it. I hate this manifestation. Right? You want to manifest yeah. some shit? Work well, we, hard. We do I have to be careful. Work hard. Mm. They're not the numerology. I've been talking about. They're not ready for that. I've been to mosques. I've been to temples. I've been to my dad is Muslim. My mother yes. was a Catholic. My grandma was a Baptist. I grew up in a multi-religious household. Absolutely. And because of that, they did not force religion on me. Right. So they left me to the world and my experiences to really decide how Same. this all works, this mm -hmm. world of things and mm -hmm. science and putting it all together Same. to realize ain't too much different from the other. It's just the way it's interpreted. Yes. But the reality is the same. Um, so I think with this spirituality toxic part of it, for people that like me who've come to spirit, like it was life experiences that brought me to understand spirit, that brought me to understand God, that brought me to understand mm -hmm. the words in the Bible, because I was scared of it. Because I grew right. up in a house that's telling me, I got y'all saying Allah, you saying God, so it's one or it's not. Like, what is it multiple? Mm -hmm. Like, what are we doing here? Okay, yeah, literally. Buddha, that was a man, so yeah. they, they worship him too. So, what what is God? Who mm -hmm. is God? Oh, and yeah. who is the power that a lot of people don't know to make Buddhism this all really make sense? And I think. Mm. People just get so mm. caught up in um, 
you know, it's it just it's, I feel like TikTok kind of pushed it out more. Uh -oh. Um, oh. and that's another story. That's why I said it could go and talk about it a little yeah. bit. But the divine masculine go. and divine feminine conversation, yeah. right? You see how you felt like, oh, let me be clear. Man, no, say what you're saying. Yeah. Like, that's how you feel. And I'm tired mm. of that, too. That can go into cancer culture. Yeah. Like, we're censoring ourselves. Oh, like, no. no. This is just, like, a, overall. No, I know. But yeah. people, yeah. Yeah, it's because the you audience have to. you shouldn't have yeah, to. Yeah, you wanna, should. You just, like, oh, disclaimer. Oh, no, 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 disclaimer. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not. No. No, but, but I, I thought it's... to mention that because that's something that came to mind in spirit. Like, when I would see, uh, like, a lot of men, like, like, they would be like, man, I don't like when women be like, all niggas are like this, or all, all bitches I mean, are like know, that. You know what I mean? Like, like, I'm just saying. It's how people talk. Yeah. And yeah. I feel like people take things literal where people they shouldn't. Soft, and like, then they do can't have a it's just like yeah. we're mm -hmm. in this weird limbo period of society where I think things are trying to like balance itself out, right? Mm -hmm. So it's men and women are more disconnected. It's most amongst millennials. I'm sorry, that's just us. Gen Z gonna be polygamous. They're, they're gonna be polygamous. They're not gonna deal with what we're dealing with. But we're dealing Gen with Z? it because Hell yeah. Gen Z, yeah, Gen Zers are gonna be more open-minded. Mm -hmm. Like we're, I don't know everyone's ages, but I'll just say I'm a younger millennial. So yeah, mm -hmm. um, yeah. with that, I could say it's a bigger, I see both sides. this conversation mm -hmm. we're having, the spiritual life, just all of this and coming to self, it's like, we, especially Pluto, Scorpio, Millennials, we are, we were confused for a while. And now it's the disconnect happened because now we're finally saying like the roles, other, yeah. the roles you're saying masculine, femininity, and like all this spiritual stuff. That's us, Scorpio, hello, transformation, rebirth. So we coming into mm. our rebirth moment. Like mm. we're really seeing like, oh, okay, so this is what was put onto me and the sense of like roles and men and women but coming back it's a spirit right because scorpio deal with the soul like we come into the soul of things and i think that goes into where this toxic spirituality then popped up and like the roles and the genders and all this cis this 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 and it could sound like i'm dismissing it and i'm not yeah. mm -hmm. i'm just saying that this constant way to like all these identities. Yeah, I was gonna say identify ourselves, and I think yeah. we just have to understand we're human first, yeah. <laughs> um, and then also then we'll go into the male females and everything that comes yeah. after that. But mm -hmm. the general consensus, I just think, to go to talk spirituality, to talk about divine feminine masculine, that all kind of goes in that same yes, conversation a little it bit. Does. So that's why I was saying like, why are we even saying divine feminine and divine masculine? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that. Like, when do we become divine? Mm -hmm. To the point, like, we are a divine beings, but when do yeah. we start? That's why I said the buzzwords. These buzzwords. These exactly. buzzwords. Like, you said, well, the yeah, that's important. It's like, let's important. talk about it as the reality that it is. We know the melanated being. Like, yes. that bothers me. I'm black, I'm melanated, I'm all of them, yes. right? Yes. Yes. all be the same thing <laughs> on my skin. What? Like, let's be, like, why are we caring about. If you say black or you say African American or you say, does that not mean that I have melanin? That's the science word. And we just, just we know what it is. Black is black is black. Melanin, like, why we gotta keep. Like, There's always that dude in the comments. That, yeah, but it's like. Don't it's call weird. yourself black. Like, literally. And I'm just like, y'all, y'all so it's hard. It's so hard. It's so hard. It's so hard. It goes been, back to everybody's journey, women, though. Have yeah. you guys been talking <laughs> at a point in your life? My whole yeah. life. Oh, okay. I just stepped into my girl. That's your masculine in this. energy. Why yeah. are we calling it. The thing that, like you always had that in you. It's just nurture well, nature, I think right? The divine like what is helping environment not situations deliberately cause out. Yeah. If you're dealing with an abusive yeah. relationship, right? Mm. You're gonna be more masculine because you're fighting. Is that is yeah. situational? Depends. So some it is really situational, but let's go back to the really divine world. Yeah. It. It's yeah. hard to come back, but yeah. at the end of the day, as beings, right? Yeah. Human first, like yeah. energy. We all have that polarity. Divine it's is what, just a balanced word. That's yeah, all yeah, it is. Because if you straight up like yeah. feminine man, masculine woman, well, I will say, it's I'll, like yeah, it sure, but it's not one thing. Divine is just saying there's there's a higher. Uh, yeah. I mean, it is necessary for that. that because what I am not seeing mm -hmm. is people differentiating. People say I'm um, stepping into my masculine, but what kind of masculine energy are you stepping into? Right, right. Because there is toxic masculinity. I mean, there is. And there's and toxic, toxic, masculinity, there's toxic femininity. I'm like, and divine femininity. So I agree with what you're saying. For some people, there are trigger words. And I, look, I love this. I, I'm sitting here absorbing how you're saying that there are toxic spirituality, um, you know, terms and. Uh, different type of behavior patterns yeah. but for me being a person that is a self-proclaimed spiritual person and you know why in that because I'm, I'm highly aware of what my journey includes 
but again, I was born 89, you know, I'm throwing that out there. And mind you, it's something about when you're born at certain times. I know it is. Um, I broke down some stuff about my life pet numbers, uh, the ones pertaining to my birthday, the ones pertaining to when I was born, and so much more. I've delved like very deep into like self just to try to find out more about self to my family, friends, people who I consider close because there were things that I would see and connect and I was like, okay, there's a lot to it. There's a lot to spirituality. It's not just, you know, it's not just feelings, not just Words. what you think, what you yeah. say. Yeah, and, and if you're going through life, you're not perfect. So right. you're going to, you're going to, you gonna fuck. You gonna do all types yeah. of shit that you know it doesn't make you not spiritual for experiencing it, because you're a spiritual being. You are. You are. You're living, breathing manifestation of a miracle, mm -hmm. and that's where I come from. And I'm always going to speak of that. So there are certain things that don't. It don't bother me because I know what the source is. I know where yeah. it comes from. Mm -hmm. Not the count. I'm not bothered by anybody's religion or the connection because. A lot of times the connection has a lot to do with what they were born into, what they mm -hmm. believed in. And some people have church hurt or they have hurt. So they don't want nothing to do with none of that. They don't yeah, want yeah. To, nothing to do with the church, nothing to do with it. And I'm, I'm like, okay, I, I feel church all hurt? of that. Oh, mm -hmm. man. Like, you, church ain't, like you just don't mess with church, church or your religion. They don't, like yeah, it, they don't mess know? with it because they've been hurt within the church. They felt the judgment or the... Um, the community, a part of the yeah, church wasn't good. Yeah, or the good. lies that they yeah. might have experienced within it. Uh, some people have been molested. Uh, within it and all types of other different church hurt. And church hurt is something a lot of people go through. Therefore, they turn away from any form of religion. Now, me, that doesn't consider myself a religious person, I still, I, you guys heard of omniscient and agnostic. Yeah. Omnipresent, so, omniscient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So know. this was something I was like trying to figure out. Is this how I identify? Because I can see, I, I can go to a mosque, I can go to a Buddhist temple, mm -hmm. I can go to a church, Type. but I can be at home and I'm, I'm straight up knowing how I'm absorbing life and spirit because again you got to tap into self you never close your doors to anything that's what i'm saying yeah, when you leave your, can come from when you me. leave that open i say ruach because the ruach is the spirit ruach kakadesh you leave it open enough you're going to get poured into fact and i'm mm -hmm. telling you like i'm i'm overstanding per se of how that works for me i can't say how it works for other people mm -hmm. but i know that there's still a lot that i'm trying to understand and we all got to just remain humble i think religion we know we, yeah sorry religion Spirituality, yeah. words are all like blanket phrases. Yeah. And in order to like really dig deep on what a phrase can mean, you have to look under it and really understand like what's under this saying. Yeah. Like, for yeah. example, make America great again. That sounds cool. Yeah. That sounds like, oh my God, America yeah. should be great, right. Right? right? But then you look under what who the person's saying it and what the ideas and yeah. what his patterns are. And it's all, to me, hate. Yeah. A lot of bad things. So it was just a it was just a blanket and people go crazy over these terms know, and it's like crazy. and that's what I was saying, like transparency is a beautiful word and it's a beautiful thing to practice. But when all you can talk about is being transparently yeah, this, is. transparently that, are you really being transparent right. if every time you talk to me you have to say transparently? Why not you just like that? Why are you yeah. not just like that? Or, mm -hmm. or, or I put well I put intention behind this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But I why? put intention behind every step that I take, and I don't right. have to talk about it. But I think There's like something I wrong think with I, telling someone that. Yeah, and I think sure. I think mm -hmm. sometimes it's it's wonderful to sit here and talk about the idea of transparency if I have good I, uh, good morals behind it. But I what I think we were talking about with toxic spirituality and even toxic religion, it's mm. claiming these words and not having anything under that blanket or having bad things under that blanket. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's when it becomes that's toxic reality. because you are not embodying the word, you mm -hmm. are copying the word. Yeah. You want to mm -hmm. be the word yeah. and you don't even understand that's what that word is. Yes. 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 And, and a lot of that is happening. Mm -hmm. exactly. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like yes. the words, the way it's being pushed out, it's like that's what makes it toxic. Because I'm like, if I hear one more tarot reader, Oh, the collective energy, mm. take what resonates, leave what doesn't, and then, away from or us. oh, divine, we're divine. The, like, but, you know what I mean? It's but just, I like, stay away like, from reading tarot. cards, it's reading like, cards is some real ass mm. shit because mm. I, I, I mean, I believe in it because oh. my sister did it. Yeah, and But yeah, when my sister just, did it, uh, and, uh, the camera's about to die. Oh, oh. oh. as much as I love this conversation, <laughs> yeah. we live in the cut like, pop, 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 yeah, pop, 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 listen, listen. I mean, in summary, in summary, in summary, in summary, the vibe I'm getting from all of this is boundaries, boundaries, mm -hmm. boundaries. The vibe I'm getting from this is yeah, yeah. understanding, understanding mm -hmm. your needs. Mm -hmm. The yeah. vibe I'm getting from this is knowing how to understand what love means. 
for you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? These are the three things. And yeah, as far as the divine masculine, divine feminine shit, like honestly, it wouldn't have to be divine if we all just didn't like blasphemy the shit, right? Right. So the, the, these terms are only needed because there are people who are manipulating these terms for bad intentions. Don't milk right? it. Yeah. So it's almost Stop like to milking. not give power to it, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. We just have to speak into existence how we move, yeah. and we just need to become the people instead of using these blanket words like yes. yes. So, mm. so I feel like, you know, I, I feel like we really move towards mm -hmm. that direction. I mm. feel like we're going to move into alignment with our best versions, which is going to attract that person or say we solo dolo. Attract the best version of you. Of yourself. Yeah. Yes. Love that. Either way, mm -hmm. it's moving to a state of gratitude and fulfillment. Yes. Which yeah. is essentially heaven on earth. Which is the highest vibration? Um, Absolutely. Okay. Period. You know. Literally. Pa 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 pa. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You were an amazing oh. host. Yes, yeah. so you are. Very much. Yeah, you made me very feel. You made me feel very. Yeah. The fruit was fire. He definitely keeps the fruit was fire. Yeah. flowing. He do, and you yeah. keeping up because we. Was, yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know where I, I jump around. Keep it on the toes. I'm ADHD a little bit sometimes, so I was like, okay, okay, he. he Still there, yeah. and I'm saying it as an interviewer, like, hey, you Thank on you. point. Yeah, you yeah. keeping us on our toes. You took all the stories listen, that came listen. right back. Don't jinx it. Yeah. 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 No, 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 no. Right. You're good. Figuring this shit out. No, no, you're natural. Yes. No, no, no. You're natural. no, no. <laughs> this is your normal Not conversations oh, in a day. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're doing great, this and is, uh, I'm, okay. you're amazing. I'll take it. I'll take it. Right, but just tell me the beginning. That's you. You already doing it. You already doing it. Art. And I want to thank you too, because I wasn't even supposed to be a part of this. <laughs> no, <laughs> and you was the damn word job. Like, yeah. I, I appreciate the being here, getting to. The, I don't know a lot about spirituality. Um, mm -hmm. It's one of those things where, when I met her, it kind of came. Go for it. <laughs> when yeah, I tell I you, I'm like it's not. I'm not always like. Like I have that voice in my head, but I'm not actively sitting there. Sometimes I'll just be looking at a wall, but nothing. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. good though. That's yeah. cool. Zoned yeah. out that's to meditation. myself. That's meditation. That's the so fun. Yeah. Kind of, <laughs> kind of being aware of things and listening to y'all talk about it. Like I never, I never thought much of it. So even mm -hmm. like numerology. I feel like my husband, he was just like numbers and she was just like Space signs and I was just like, open vessel to yes. get poured into. So it's all coming oh, back yeah. to you. And it's so beautiful. Yeah. Just being an open <laughs> vessel and just learn up. It, it can makes be a all teacher, sense. but to be a teacher, you have to be a student. It's oh, like, mm -hmm. right. yes. and you have to enter every relationship in life being a teacher and a learner yeah, because yeah. people will only give to you when they think or they know that you have their best interest at heart. Mm -hmm. right? okay. So it's like, can't fake it. You can fake it temporarily, but you're going to get exposed eventually. eventually. Yeah. So listen, we about the long time, not the fun time. Sustainable oh. is the way. And um, <laughs> yeah. What's y'all handles? People out here in the comments, yeah. they're trying to That's figure out, talking about, That's you got these awesome. beautiful sisters on the podcast. They trying to, you know, hopefully not shoot unsolicited DMs. <laughs> I uh, definitely want to admire. So could you all drop your handles and all that good shit? Yes, mine is at Sherry Soul Music. That's C H E R I S O U L Music. Much love. Uh, mine is Curly Desi. I'm on Instagram. Oh man, Twitter, pretty much everything. But also, my EP just came out last month, so if y'all want to check out that, yeah, oh, yeah, it just came out. Oh man, uh, <laughs> dead. <Go ahead. laughs> it's cool. But also, please also tag with my family at Pandora. So I appreciate y'all. This was fun. All y'all were amazing. Y'all taught me some stuff. I'm kind of young, so mm -hmm. I appreciate y'all. Period. I am Baka Flaka Baka with a K <laughs> like underscore. It. So it's Baka cute. Flaka exactly. underscore. <laughs> um, yeah, I have a. Visionary Expose at the Promontory, March 10th. Hey, so hit it up, hit it up. Pull up. We're going to be showcasing Come Chicago's on. best brands, designers, uh, models, music artists, da and dancers. So yeah, yeah. you up. might catch me there on the runway. Y'all going to have to double no, back to me because I'm there. I would love to have you guys. <laughs> you guys can yeah. all sit together and I can yeah. see what y'all Let's make the environment comfortable. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You're yeah. welcome. Uh, um, for me, you can follow me. My personal page is e t underscore miss extra. Um, yes. If Love you that. guys are nerds, or if you want to ever appear on the show, or if you're a musician, because um, it is set up like the average late night talk show. I have mm -hmm. two guests, musical guests, to end the show. Um, you guys can follow the Nerdium. 
That's the underscore N E R D I U M. I love that. Love that. I love it. Everybody in Chicago is welcome to us. So y'all a little nerdy on the inside. Hell yeah. yeah. Just a little bit. It's I'm a nerd. I'll <laughs> take it. Now we all. Um, for me, um, I used to be the hostess with the most. It's now I'm just finding mics. So I, I don't. I don't know. I, did, I haven't done this in a while. So welcome uh, back. Hey, Hello. yes, the pressure, the pressure, but we did it. You what know, pressure? You was flowing. No, no. You was comfortable. I, I, Definitely you know, settled. Y'all know, like, I be, I be feeling this. Shush, 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 you in the background. But, yes, <laughs> I talk a lot. So, if you want to hear me talk or see all the things, send me as a T-E-A-T-I-M-T-I-M-Y. So, that's all my nicknames. P. Timothy. Yes. Great. Per, per, per. Those are my initials too. So I felt the way when all the like podcast hosts though were like tea time with. I'm like, <laughs> my name really has T. That's like speak on it. T E A. Speak on it. Are my initials. I they owe you loyalties. Tea. You get the real T with me. I'm just saying. Okay. Mm. okay. Need Shameless. Need Don't need shame. You better speak on it. Need it. I'm the no real T. Hey. Like, <laughs> 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 Shameless plug. Um, okay, so uh, it's oh, a lot. Oh, thank you so much. She made and I, I you know, made this ring. Oh, Shout out to God. Sherry Soul Designs. <laughs> um, okay, so we're releasing an album project. Shout out to Creative Revolution. Yes. It's an artist collective I work with, and we're re- releasing an album called The Beginning. That's the 18th of February. Um, yes. I performed February 10th at, um, oh my God, uh, The Quarry. Okay. Um, February 25th. I'll be two places. I'll be at Tavern on the Grange, and I'll uh, be doing a production called You Don't Know My Story with uh, Divine Purpose Fine Arts Center. Uh, March 10th <laughs> and 11th, I'll be in Zion, Illinois, with my band, Black Cherry Soul. You got your stuff, man. So, oh, and um, mm-hmm. uh, there's a lot more going on. So y'all follow me at Sherry, uh, Sherry Soul Music, like I said, because there's a lot going on, and uh, we got to keep it tuning all these beautiful people, man. Yes. Yes, we got yes, a lot ma'am. going on. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 This was powerful. This was fantastic. As always, stay hydrated. Stay breathing in. Stay breathing in <laughs> that good ass oxygen. <sighs> and most important, yeah, that's Prada, baby. Yeah, I was just saying the Prada. Yes. Yes. Listen, listen. I love it. I ain't trying to get plagiarized. <laughs> no, I ain't. Hey, I he get it. Great. Shout out Ralph Smart. Oh, okay. yes. I had to shoot you up. Fellow, fellow. I had to shoot you up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but then again. And most importantly, stay basic. Can I?